can you show up for a game a half hour before? Okay. How can you show up? Yeah, that should be good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It should, I would imagine, if it's coming from the camera, the output should go to the YouTube stream. We could do a test. We could do a test YouTube stream and see if the audio comes through. Okay, sounds good. No idea. I'll stay here. How can you do a game and you don't know the official thing? <laughs> How can you do that? <laughs> you can't, right? He's on me hard. He's on me hard. His, expe his expectation is level most. Here, here's the official. Hey, do you think you should call my dad and tell you him? Do you think official. he showed up a half hour before Pirates games? Oh, I know he didn't. I guess the intern with him. Do you think he did it for free, though, like Gavin? Yeah, I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart. They're getting my best effort with him. Hey, I'd like to talk to you. He wants to have a photo. Sit down next to us. Who, Andy? Don't tell Bob Frank. Believe me, I don't care. When we would go in, we would go in about five or seven or four times. Well, hey, Bob Frank shot up three minutes before the game. I hope you don't know. It's totally fine. Whatever you think you're doing.
Coach Render's mic test, test one, two, one, two.
Hang on, hang on. Mike, Mike was off. Yep, Mike was off. Okay. All right, checked one, two, three, check one, two, three, Mike, check. Ladies and gentlemen. So if we get. Okay, all right.
everybody and welcome here to Upper St. Clair Panther Stadium on homecoming. We got a big one tonight as the Upper St. Clair Panthers will face the Moon Tigers in a big section contest that will have big implications for the playoffs. We will get into that. I'd like to introduce the people next to me. I have a great booth here tonight um, and uh, the, the man to my left was a, a great quarterback here, class of 2005, played at Yale. Josh Helmrich, thanks for joining me. I appreciate you being here. Thanks Gavin, excited to be here and uh, see some live football and, and uh, hopefully everyone home can enjoy what's sure to be a great game. Uh, the man on my far left needs no introduction. All-time winning as coach in the in the Whippeal history. Long-time legendary Upper St. Clair football coach, Coach Jim Render. Thanks for being here, Coach. Gavin, to sit with you two guys is like sitting with the Queen of England. <laughs> oh, guys, if you, if you love that, uh, if you love that, that, that's the type of stuff you're going to hear tonight. Now, uh, but before we get to the game action, we want to set the scene. Um, Moon comes into this game having lost their last two to drop their record to three and two. They're only one and two in the section. The Panthers are two and one in the section, coming off of a big win last week against West Allegheny at home. And you know, it, it's an interesting season because it's only a seven-game season. It's a, a sprint to the finish. The Panthers have two more games left. This one tonight and then at South Fayette to end the conference season. If they can win both and they control their own destiny, they will probably host a first-round playoff game. Josh, we talked to Coach Junko on Wednesday. What are you looking for from the Panthers now? What do you think some of the keys are? Yeah, I mean, I think that you touched on the first thing, which is they control their own destiny. So having the ability to dictate the rest of your season, I think bodes well for Upper St. Clair and how they come out tonight and start fast. You know, I think as Coach Jungo touched on, Upper St. Clair's strength is their offense. They have a lot of skilled players that have a lot of experience uh, with Dolan at quarterback and Pantillas out wide. Moon, on the other hand, strength is their defense. And so, you know, it's strength versus strength, and uh, we'll see who can get come out on top tonight. They both have an opportunity to make the playoffs, and uh, tonight will be a big step along that journey. You know, Moon last year was the section champions. They haven't been a perennial football power, but I think last year at Moon, I was at the game, they kind of snuck up on the Panthers a little bit and surprised them. They really dominated the line of scrimmage. A lot of those guys returned today, and I think uh, Coach Shunko has challenged his line to, to step up and to be counted for tonight and I think one of the things you'll need to watch is how the Panthers fare on the line of scrimmage. Coach, what are your thoughts here heading into this one? Well, I think Upper St. Clair's got too many great skilled kids. Um, David Pantelis in my book is the outstanding athlete on the field or the basketball court every week. And uh, uh, we'll see, but I think uh, Upper St. Clair will have a big night. I hope you're right. I think the key is going to be giving Ethan Dallum time. We talked about this on, on Wednesday with Coach. You know, when Ethan Dallum gets pressured, he can also run. He's a real dual threat guy, and so you have to be careful when you're committing numbers to the box and sending them. So uh, that'll be something interesting. But you know, the, the Moon team can rush four and really get home. The guy to watch on the defensive line is number 53, Ben Bladell. He was a first team All State defensive end last year. He's the one 53 that you're gonna have to watch. Keep out of the backfield. Yeah, he had two, 22 and a half sacks, I believe, last year. It was All State, and uh, you know, coupled with their other defensive end, who I saw last week had a sack, number 54. You know, it's really strong defense here. So here's the kickoff. This is Sabarzo, the senior, the lefty. And it looks like, oh, nice open field tackle by number five, Jaden Keating. That's number 22, Dawson Snyder, who's the big offensive threat for Moon on the flank. And that was good special teams coverage from the Panthers. Yeah. I, had to, I had to laugh there, Gavin, last week. Something came up and said, well, he'll probably put it in the end zone on the kickoff. And I, I had never seen him do it. Well, lo and behold, the one you called, he did. <laughs> yeah, there was a penalty, and we were moved up a little bit. I was wondering if he was going to get cute and try to pin him deep, and Coach kind of gave me a look saying, no, he's going to boot it in the end zone, and that's exactly what happened. So the Tigers start here from their own 23, first and 10, and they, they look like they're going up the stretch. So... I've heard Moon's strategy, and I talked to a couple of the Moon people before the game, was they thought they got too pass-happy against Peters. And Ty McGowan, their, their quarterback, is a two-year starter. He's a lefty and a dual-threat guy. And they expected him to go kind of power yeah. at him, and that was Dustin Sleeve, the big, powerful back. I mean, I think talking to Coach Junko, that's what they're hoping to get, which is get them throwing the ball. The quarterback has the ability to throw a nice ball, but lacks some of the consistency you'd hope to see. This is a quick route up the middle. Good pass, but Luke Banbury is there across the middle. And, and so it's going to set up a third down um, for Moon, uh, third and short, but uh, you know I think the Panthers you'll take that in terms of you know getting it in front of the linebackers for about a five or six yard gain. So we got about a third and three. 
And this is a big play here in terms of field position, establishing it early on. Yeah, Coach Jungle talked about not wanting to have to drive the whole field. So getting a stop here early will give the Panthers good field position if they can get a stop here on third down. So let's see if the Panthers bring the house here. Now that it looks like they're rushing four. This is Dean to the outside. He cuts through. Looks like he's just it's, got nah, it by he the just spot. got yeah. it. Uh, the Panthers did a nice job of coming up and, and, and hitting him there in terms of you know their pursuit from the linebacker spot, but he just got the first down, and uh, that's a big that's a big play to move the chains on your first drive instead of going three and out. It's big for Moon, tough for St. Clair, but uh, if they can make a stop in the next couple of downs, still get the ball in relatively good field position. So the Panthers, Panthers look like they have about the same starting defense. We'll get into the personnel kind of when we have some time here, but again, this is McGowan, the lefty quarterback. Empty set. He looks like he's going across the middle. He does. He finds nice Oh, a big hit from middle linebacker Luke Banbury, the senior who's heading the Cornell, smacked him and really made the wide receiver pay. That's great uh, coverage there. Yeah, great closing speed, great hit. Uh, I mean, he's a heck of an athlete. San is lucky to have quite a few of them, but uh, he's definitely a great player both sides of the ball. Yeah, I told people last week, you will be shocked how skilled he is as a basketball player because he's such a, a brute kid, on, but he's a great athlete and he's you know very, very skilled as a basketball player. He'll start for us this year. Not even two minutes in and we're already having the basketball references. Oh, I was wondering how it, it would take. It's yeah. coming. Well, yeah. I, I try to stick to the sport. I know. I'll leave the football to you guys. We got second and eight here from the 36. McGowan. Ooh, a tight little pitch to Sleva. And nice tackle there. It looked like Joseph Howe kind of diagnosed it and tackled him from behind for a little short game. Gavin, that, that's considered a forward pass. So that, that goes on the quarterback's distance. Would you yep. call that a trap? I mean, that, that looked like the guard pulled across there. You don't see a, a shuffle pass like that. Usually you have time to run a trap play. That was an interesting thing. And Coach Junko said this team's very multiple. You'll see a lot of different looks. And that was kind of an interesting look. So I, it looks like their strategy here is to kind of, you know, ch get chunks and have ma very manageable third down. So we have third and four from the 40 here. As you'll see with St. Clair, I mean, Moon has yet to go under center. So um, I think that's, you know, indicative of the kind of offense they run. They fake a little. Oh, that's a great play underneath. He looks like he's short, a good three yards short, gain of one probably. That's terrific from David Pantelis coming up and closing. He read that play beautifully, closed, and I think it's going to be short. So it looks like they'll probably go for it here at midfield. Nope, they're going to send the punting unit out. So just as we talked about, good for St. Clair to get a stop on the first series. They'll get the ball, depending on the punt, with relatively good field position. Coach, a play made by the best athlete on the field. Yeah. We're going to get in, many. We're going to get into that and over this little break here after the punt return. So Mateo Sapolio, number two, the uh, outstanding junior athlete, is back to receive the punt. Standing at his own 25. Okay, no real pressure up the middle. And it's a short, short punt. They're going to let it bounce and not a particularly great punt. It only gets to about the upper St. Clair 39. So pretty good field position from the Panthers as they take over on their first possession. So, Coach, you, you got into David Pantelis and you were uh, marveling at his athleticism. You've coached some unbelievable playmakers at St. Clair. I mean, you know, you go back to Nick Cullen, but also in Josh's era, you know, we had Kevin Matthews and Danny Cofero, Adam Christus. Do you put Dave in the, in the caliber of those kids? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Yes, he and, he and his brother both were marvelous athletes, and I, I think, <clears throat> I think uh, David is in the category of flag coming back here, guys. Nicky Cullen, who had a marvelous career at Virginia Tech. That's pretty high praise for you guys who have not been following the program as long as I have. Uh, but so this is going to be an interesting topic that I want to talk about here. Uh, it looked like a good little end around, but again, it called back on a holding penalty. And, and the Panthers, if there's been a bugaboo for the Panthers the last three weeks, it's been penalties, especially on the offensive side of the ball, moving them behind the sticks. They're, they are a big play offense, but you can't keep having first and 20. Yeah. Um, and, and we're going to talk about that, but that, that's a big, you know, instead of having a really good positive gain on the first play, um, it's now first and 20. Yeah. So this is a... An interesting formation. We have Jamal Brown, number seven, as a sidecar left. He Ethan fakes it to Jamal Brown. Here comes Dallum up the middle for Gain about three, three or yeah. four. Not much there. Yeah, Gavin. So this is this is what we talked about at the beginning here. Strength on strength. 
yeah. e Ethan will be looking to use both his feet and his arm with that D-line getting pressure. So um, we'll stay in, in, in shotgun and no huddle and see if Ethan can uh, move the ball down the field a little bit here. So Moon's line, which is excellent, has a lot of kids who play both ways, and so you wonder if the tempo will wear them down a little bit. That's probably the goal. It is a little cooler tonight than it was last week, but still pretty warm for football, and um, you know you, you want to try to keep those kids on the field. Dallas, oh fakes, here comes Banbury. And Banbury leans forward, gets to about the 37 to the 38 for a gain of eight. So uh, they have cut that deficit from the penalty in half, and it looks like it's going to be about third and 11. Yeah, still tough to be behind the sticks and have third and 10 plus, which they're sitting here third and 11, not how you want your first offensive drive to start. But uh, see if they can make something out of it. Yeah, the holding and the uh, pre-snap stuff has been, you know, it's been difficult for the Panthers so far. Dallin fakes. He rolls to his he rolls to his left. He's looking downfield. He throws. Coming back to the ball and didn't quite get it, unfortunately. It looked like Besselman had a beat on it, but I don't think yeah, it's going to be an incomplete and the Panthers are going to be forced to punt. Yeah, just short-armed it a little bit. You know, it's tough rolling to the opposite hand to throw to throw back across your body, but uh, he got his shoulders around. Tough throw all the way across the field to the sideline. Just about a yard short. If he had that any higher, I think it would have been complete. So, unfortunately, uh, Luke Banbury is going to have to do the punting this evening as uh, Panther starting tailback slash starting punter slash starting linebacker Ethan Heaster is, in, is out with an injury. Banbury punts it. Pretty good one. And a good, good quick tackle there. It looks like, I think that was Segura. Down to yeah. 36, yeah. So, uh, really, what's, when did he get hurt? So, he still got hurt last week on a punt in the second half. He got roughed on a punt, kind of dove into his leg. I saw him several times this week. He said he was feeling pretty good, but um, probably not, not able to go, and hopefully next week. So, and he's a big loss. He's a great player. He is a big loss. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy who, who impacts the game in all three phases. He's a great uh, coverage guy in the kick. He's a terrific defensive player, and he's the starting tailback. So, yeah. And an all-conference punter from last year. And St. Clair's been struggled with some injuries. Obviously, Pantillas got hurt and missed a game or two, and um, keeping everyone on the field is, is really important. Oh, absolutely. Not for a school of that size. Here comes Brandon Coe. He gets in but can't quite bring him down. Here comes McGowan's, and he will slide and gets about seven. Um, probably smart to avoid a hit, but that's a pretty good gain on first down. Uh, Brandon Coe, who's been a really excellent uh, disruptive force on the defensive line this year, uh, had good pressure. Yeah. Jamal Brown coming up to help make the stop. He's a sophomore, Gavin, is that right? I mean, he's all over the field. It's great to see some of the young guys. Obviously, St. Clair on offense is loaded with senior talent, but to see some of the younger guys uh, on defense is really good. Yeah, and you'll uh, probably see well. Brown carry the ball more today because uh, of Heaster's injury. So we got second and four in the 42. Six minutes to go in the first quarter. No score. McGowan's back to throw. Quick, quick little out pattern, and it looks like it's going to be a first down for Moon. Yeah. So Moon's huddling up a little bit more than St. Clair does, but still likes to run that tempo offense and shotgun every single time. That We talked to Coach Junko about that a little bit, but that seems to be the way of high school football. Coach, not like your days. I don't think we had shotgun in the playbook. but uh, We had it. Not when I was a quarterback. We, we did not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was personnel based. Yeah. <laughs> McGowan's is back. It's going to be a center screen, and it's loose. Brandon Coe reads it beautifully and makes a nice tackle for a short gain of about three. Good job diagnosing what could have been a big game. Never watched Tom Brady. He always is under center on the first couple of plays of the game. I'd really like to know the thinking. But, uh, and Alabama still has a quarterback under center a lot. So. <laughs> You're, you're saying you had good company. I get it. But shotgun does seem the, to be the way of uh, a lot of the well, high schools there's recently. there's a lot of <laughs> copycat For sure. coaches. Yeah. You know, yeah. I copied Woody Hayes. <laughs> McGowan's back to throw. He's Not got a little a bit of time. Guy. He's rolling to his left. Now he throws it away uh, for an incomplete pass. It will be third and five. You know, Coach, it's, it's, it's interesting. And there are still plenty of people who do it. I think it's probably personnel-based in a way. Um, you know, it might be a way of disguising some of uh, your deficiencies, so to speak. I, I agree. And, you know, passing, uh, practicing passing and catching is fun. It's like basketball practice. Basketball practice is fun. Football practice, when you're pounding, pounding is not always fun. I'll be sure to re be sure to remind my kids next year that this practice is fun. <laughs> Third and five from just across midfield. McGowan's is back. 
Coe's got a rush, reaches his hand and can't quite get there. Now here comes Jalen Mortimer, and Jalen Mortimer is going to get the sack. That's, that could be considered a coverage sack, but great pursuit from the Panthers. Definitely covered just, just a three, four man rush there and, and got it, not by bringing an extra man, but by beating the block. So great job by the secondary and the D-line to keep up the pressure and ultimately get to the quarterback. Huge stop, back to fourth and ten. St. Clair hopefully get the ball around the 20-yard line and, and uh, get another shot at it on offense. Been very impressed with Brandon Coe in the pass rush so far. He's had, you know, they've only been rushing three or four guys, and Coe's gotten in there each time. He hasn't gotten him down yet, but uh, he forced him up in the pocket and kind of led to that sack. Yeah. So, all right, another punt from Moon. Not much of a rush. Again, this is a much better punt. Sapolio is over toward his right to field it, but it will bounce harmlessly out of bounds, and the Panthers will take the ball on the 22-yard line with about four minutes to go in the first quarter. No score. I'm going to tell you how old I am. <laughs> I coached, I was a young man, I coached Coe's grandfather at West Virginia University. And his father grew up right beside me in Upper St. Clair. I coached him, and I coached this young man when he was a sophomore. So that's... And he coached his Uncle Aaron, too. Yes. Oh, oh ball's oh, on the ground, though. Oh, and this is trouble. This is this is and this is going to be a touchdown. And that is Dawson Snyder, the, the big play man for the Tigers. And unfortunately, the Panthers put it on the brown up ground. I believe it was uh, Jaden Keating, the senior tailback. And this is going to be a six nothing lead for Moon. And the two things we've talked about that they couldn't do were penalties and turnovers. We've seen them both already in the first quarter. Yeah, it's a tough way it's a good to start. Point. That's a great point, Gavin. Tough way to start, but. Uh, I turned my head on that play, to be honest with you, to look at you guys, and I didn't see what really happened. Guy, it looked like he just punched the ball out. <laughs> Unfortunately, the short side, there was nobody there. The ball was lined to be picked up, and uh, no one between him and the end zone. I saw Ethan. the pickup. Yeah. And the extra point is up, and it is good. So the Moon Tigers strike first on a mistake by the Panthers, and with 3.46 to go, they take a 7 nothing lead here. So, guys, what do you think about the new press box? I mean, Coach, I kind of want to hear your take on this. You coached for all these years. We had basically no press box of one to speak, and then we have this palace now that you're gone. Well, I'm going to pat myself on the back here. I told them that they should build this building for the administrative offices and a press box and concession stands. But I told them they should do this 15 years ago, right after uh, Pine Richland had put in a similar building and of course you know nobody listens to a high school football coach about uh, facilities but anyhow I'm happy that 15 years later they did it and this is a marvelous facility for the offices and uh, there's some uh, glitches with this press box part but I talked to Dr. Raza the superintendent and they're going to correct some things and make it better it's just, it's really comfortable, I'll tell you that, in terms of your broadcasting perspective. It's excellent. Oh. So um, here comes the kickoff, and we have Dave Pantelis deep, but this is going to be senior Ryan McKeever. McKeever, the receiver, he's running to his left. Now he cuts up the middle, and pretty good tackle. Gets to about the 27 or so, and that's where the Panthers will start here. Did you guys see the block by, number, by Keating? I mean, he just lit a guy up. Unbelievable block, which is great to see one of your starting running backs out there on special teams making, making blocks. Coach would have appreciated that. Uh, Jaden Keating's a fabulous kid, huge character kid. He's on the homecoming court. He's very well thought of by, uh, you know, by his student friends and teammates. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, you, you feel bad. I mean, it's just it's a mistake that anybody can make. Hopefully the Panthers will play a flawless game from here on out. Going to have to because I have a feeling this game isn't going to be a hugely high-scoring game like we saw last week. No. I mean, they have such a good defense on Moon's side of the ball. It, you know, going to be hard-pressed to get points, so got to make the most of it. Fake the end around of Sapolio. Here comes Ethan Down dancing out of a tackle, dancing out of another tackle. He's still going. He got about five. They reached from behind. And, you know, Ethan Down, when he has the ball in his hands, you kind of scoot up in your seat because you know a big play. Well, I, th I, thought he was gonna br I thought he was going to go the whole way there for a second. He's a good runner. About one more miss. And, he and he's so tough. He is just so tough. So, okay, we, that's a pretty good gain on first down, though. So the Panthers are going to have a second and five from their own 32. They're trying to go tempo here, but it looks like uh, Ethan's going to check with me on the sideline here. He's got some time, though. We have four receivers here. Dallum's looking to throw. That was Badler coming. Dallum's going to his right. He's got some time. 
He's throwing it deep. He's got a man. Can he get to Dave? Dave oh. didn't quite get there. Just off his fingertips. Boy, that, I mean, Ethan had, you know, he was running, sprinting full to his right. Looked like he was about to take a pop and just tossed it up and almost hit an open David Pantelis down the field. As we talked about, I mean, he did a great job avoiding, got some good pressure from number 53 on Moon, stepped up in the pocket, moved, moved made, made some space for himself to throw the ball. Just overthrew him by a yard. Otherwise, it's a huge gain to Pantelis. Well, we took, Coach Shunko talked about they were going to, they weren't going to be able to get five yards of crack. They were going to have to have big chunk plays, and you almost saw the first one there. So this will be interesting to see what we see here. If, uh, you know, again, they try to go down the field. Peters really victimized Moon down the field deep into the secondary sure. several times. Panthers have the players to do it. And it looks like it's going to be a timeout from St. Clair. Uh, we talked about this last week, how on the first perceived big third down of the game, a lot of times yeah. you see a timeout, and <laughs> we're seeing it again tonight. Coach, you saw a lot of these guys in shotgun there. They're running no huddle. Everyone looks to the sideline. We never ran that in high school, and I didn't really run that style of offense in college. How are they sending in the signals? Did you ever run anything like that? Everyone's looking at different coaches, and, and the receivers are getting their routes from a specific coach. Quarterback's getting his route, and the line's getting the line call. Is that, is that how it works roughly, or what are they looking at when they look over to the sideline? I'm not 100% sure, except I think possibly one of the guys in the red jackets is is flashing dummy signals. Okay. And somebody else is live. And um, so, you know, in other words, once they get the, the, the base, mm -hmm. then I think the receivers know what to do. On the other hand, you might be right. There might be somebody signaling to different positions. To the receivers. One thing we did hear from Coach Junko is that sometimes he'll call the front side of the play and leave some freedom for Ethan to call the back side. So if you see trips to one side and a lone receiver to the other side, he sometimes give Ethan the flexibility to make his own call based on what they're seeing out there. And Ethan is so smart it doesn't surprise me. He's a, he's a, a great, great decision maker. So here we go, third and five. This is kind of a big play for the Panthers. Haven't really uh, made a first down yet. So, oh, and a big big blitz here. Dallum's running for his life to his right. He's going to try to get it upfield. He does. What a great play to Pantelis. Just great stuff from Ethan Dallum to escape a big pass rush and throw a dart to Pantelis for the first down. I mean, just like the last time, broke out of the pocket, running to his right. Great throw. This was just a little bit of an easier throw. Pantelis stopped instead of running uh, past the defensive back. Stepped out out of bounds after getting the first down, and they live to fight again. So here they get that. That's a big, big play. You'll want to get your first first down, can give you some confidence, get them on their heels. Here's down, and the ball is deflected. Good pass rush again from Moon. Couldn't quite get the ball out to Banbury, so it'll be second and 10 for the Panthers. Yeah. Coach Junko talked about that. I mean, with their defensive line getting great pressure, not only do they get sacks, but they knock a lot of passes down. Ethan is not the tallest quarterback. I know about that uh, problem myself. And uh, being in the shotgun certainly helps, but still it's going to be a challenge to get it over the linemen, especially when they get a good rush. And Ethan's kind of a guy who you know, is, is dangerous when the play breaks down, and you know, that's what you saw there on the first down play. So here comes Dave Pantelis on the end around. Dave's cutting it upfield. Here he goes. Oh, what a cutback. And he gets about seven or eight. David is just so dangerous with the ball in his hands. You just expect him to make the first and second guy miss. And he was gang tackled there, but an eight-yard gain is a great gain. Just like the moon play, I think Coach would like to point out, and I would too as a quarterback, that is a forward pass there. Counts in the passing statistics for the quarterback. Reminds me of that end around play Coach Render used to run with Adam Chrysis that was so successful in the state championship year. Yeah, man, we did it with Danny Fair, unbelievable athlete as well. And when you get that ball in your hands going full speed and everyone else is standing flat-footed, it's such an advantage, especially for those athletes. I mean, you give the ball to Pantillas or in our day, Danny Caffaro, going at full speed at the snap, I mean, that's just a huge advantage. Give them a little space and they can go a long way. So that was a good little RPO concept on third down there. Dallin faked the ball, read the defense, and uh, as Alex told me last week, you, you kind of read the, what the defensive end does. If he commits to the back, you go, and Ethan read that correctly and got a first down. So the Panthers have it. First and 10 on the moon, 38. Dallin back to throw. Has some time here. Now he's creeping to the outside. He's looking down the field, and he's just going to throw it out of bounds. It looked like he was trying to communicate with uh, with Besselman to, to, to go downfield to sort of, you know, ad lib a little bit, but he, he didn't read him correctly, and it's just an incomplete pass. Yeah, I think, I think one of the challenges he has as a shorter quarterback, as did I, 
the, the, the O-line actually did great on that play, right? He didn't have any pressure. He did not need to break contain or break the pocket like he has had success with, had success with so far. He could have hung in the pocket a little bit and wait for his receivers to get open. So here comes Dallum. He's got a man down the slot. It's thrown out to his David wow. Pantelis, and that is a perfect touchdown, a dart down the seam from 38 yards out, and the Panthers could tie it up with an extra point here. Great stuff from Dallum to Pantelis. I mean, just like we talked about in the last play, this time Ethan stayed in the pocket, stepped up, and delivered a perfect pass to Pantelis right in stride. Easy touchdown. Wish they were all that easy, but uh, like you said, splash play. There's the first real big splash play, and ties the game up after this extra point. We're, we're going to see more of that tonight. Uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sound like a critical, but I haven't seen people that can cover David Pantelis. I mean, got to get him the ball more, whether it's that reverse or that post play. You know, he's been running, he was running down the sideline. Now he faked that sideline and hit the post. And he was wide open. Yeah. So you know, unless Moon has got a great athlete covering him, he's going to be open every play in some form. Now I realize there's other parts: protection, rollout, drop back. I think one of the reasons. Dollum didn't attempt to roll out that time was because David ran a post pattern rather yeah. than something An on the sure, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, go ahead. Well, it's just really interesting to hear this because, um, you know, David in the first half last week ran rough shot. I mean, he was just, he ran wild, and then they really bracketed him in the second half and focused on him, opened up some other stuff. But, you know, Dave, Dave last year put up just video game huge numbers, and then he got hurt the early part of this year, and I think last week was the first time I said, boy, that looks like Dave. <laughs> and then it'll be interesting to see because I, I agree, I tend to agree with with coach when you have a matchup yeah. we'll see how much they the, go back to the it. only counter to that or the important thing to keep in mind is even though nobody can cover them you got to give Ethan enough time to throw the ball and they have a great D line get a lot of good pressure so if they can keep Ethan uh, clean in the pocket I agree with you coach got to get got to get the ball downfield to Pantillas. So it's a good kickoff here again. Here's Jaden Keating. Oh, great move from Dawson. That, he really is an athletic kid. But it's a good tackle by Will Engel, the uh, senior receiver. And, you know, a, a, again, pretty good kick coverage from the Panthers. i got to give a shout-out here. I got uh, our first Twitter hello. Uh, apparently he's talking about how Coach Render and myself are a legendary combo in the booth. Antonio Orsini, thanks for listening, my friend. It's great to hear from you, our Duquesne uh, football player. Hello, Antonio. <laughs> one, of the, one of the greats. I love hearing uh, – Love hearing from my Panther alums. So, um, again, the Panther defense has been pretty good so far. Obviously, uh, the touchdown was a, a defensive touchdown for Moon. Hopefully the Panthers can, you know, again, pin them deep and uh, get the ball back. It's going to be an interior run here. This is Sleva again. Oh, and he goes strong up the middle for probably eight. And, and that is a, that's a tough, good, hard run. And, and, again, that's what we talked about. We expected them to go hard right at the point of attack, and, and they got eight there. Yeah, and that's what St. Clair needs to stop. I mean, Coach Bout, Coach Junko told us we need to stop the run and get them throwing the ball consistently to uh, get St. Clair in the position we want to be in. Yeah, that's Roberts, the other linebacker. So they have two big, strong backs. Um, and, you know, that's – they got, the Panthers have Mark Banbury and at the other defensive tackle, the sophomore. He is a really strong kid. Oh. And there's a big – oh, what a stick up the middle. And that is Banbury, again, the middle linebacker. It'll be a first down, but uh, he may think twice about putting his neck in there again. Big hit from Banbury. As you talked about, though, mixing up the formations, if you just saw they motioned the quarterback out and did a little bit of a wildcat there, snapping directly to the running back. Um, but as you said, big hit in the hole. They're getting four or five yards a pop on the run, so we really need to – to close down the middle and make them go to the air. So it doesn't look like they will need to snap the ball again here. No. Uh, the, the play clock is just behind the game clock. And so it looks like this is going to be the end of the first quarter, and, and our score will be Upper St. Clair 7 and Moon 7. Um, so, hey, let's, let's, let's take this opportunity while we have Coach to, uh, you know, go, let's, let's, we have a couple of topics that we really wanted to talk about. And one I wanted to talk about that Josh uh, had already brought up is it must be really, really difficult. We didn't have a real off season with all the COVID issues, and you know, practice time has been scarce and limited. We kind of got the go ahead very late that we were going to play. How difficult do you think that is? And do you have anything that's kind of analogous or comparable from your career that you think um, you know might help describe to our listeners what that would be like for a coaching staff? Well, COVID nineteen is very unique, so. <clears throat> uh, 
I think the last pandemic was, what, 100 years ago or something? I wasn't there. Uh, but sure, it's very difficult when you lose teach time, practice time. Uh, you know, after all, these guys are uh, 15, 16, 17 years old. And uh, when you're 15 or 16, you haven't been exposed to big time high school football. So you lose a lot of, obviously you lost a lot of teaching time. And of course, uh, the only other thing that I could possibly think about to relate is was 9-11 uh, that affected our practice week. And, and uh, I don't, I think we did play on Friday night I don't think it was moved to Saturday. I can't. I can't. Remember. I was a freshman. I remember our game was canceled. That's where our practice is. But I, I think the varsity did play that week. All right. So we're back again here to start the second quarter. Moon has it first and ten on their own thirty-six. McGowan hands Roberts again up the middle, and he has a nice little gap. But Banbury again comes up and closes the hole, along with number sixty-six Joseph Houck. Just the to fine tackle. Go just ahead. to close the topic, Coach. One of the things Coach Junko told us was an interesting challenge was not only do you lose teach time, but even now that you have the players back, you don't get the same opportunities with them. For example, they can't all be in the same locker room. They're spread across multiple locker rooms. So opportunities to address the full team, some of the things that you might just be accustomed to as taken for granted, they can't do this year. And it makes it a lot harder, even in meeting rooms, when they do breakouts with wide receivers and running backs, they can't have all the young kids in there with the seniors because they have limitations on how many people can be in a room. So that's a nice tough run by Roberts off tackle. I thought there was a hold there um, Co is in the backfield again. I thought the left guard may have been uh, holding. It looked a, a little bit like the first play from scrimmage from St. Clair, but uh, nothing was called, and the moon's going to move the sticks again. Coach will tell you there could be holding called on every single play. Offensive linemen are told, taught to hold the defensive line. It's when you get your hands outside or a guy twists that you get caught and they throw a flag. So, you know, it's only holding if you get caught, and uh, St. Clair just needs to make a tackle. All right, it's another. This is Sleva again, big, hard, strong physical middle linebacker and he gets about six or seven Panthers are gonna have to be a little more stout in the run game so guys do you think is this a, an issue of just you know the, the down line has got to be a little more stout or are they gonna have to start you know sending some linebackers in the gap here and changing their strategy on defense a little bit look say well, go ahead coach well that kid's ripping off six and seven yards and we got to shore up something down there yeah. I mean moon won the conference last year there's a flag for you Moon won the conference last year and returns eight kids on each side of the ball. So they have good players. You know, I don't think you should be surprised they can move the ball. St. Clair just needs to, like you said, if they send pressure or send an extra rusher, stop the run and make them put the ball in the air, and, and hopefully that's when good things will happen for St. Clair. So fortunately, it looks like we got a false start on Moon. I, it, was, it was some sort of pre-snap penalty, although I didn't see it. Looks like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're going to back him up. That's that's a, a fairly big penalty here because again, if you're you know running it and, and doing the short passing game, uh, you know five yards is a big deal. So Panthers have to be a little more stout here on the run game, and uh, hopefully they can take advantage of this penalty. So we're back to second and nine here as the clock rolls. Ten uh, ten minutes to go in the first half. So here's McGowan's. He's got a, he's got another tailback again here at Sleva. He fakes to him. It's going to be a bootleg to his run. left. He's got a little room. Here he comes. Pantelis is up and Banbury Ball's tackles him from behind. It's a, the ball is fumbled, and it looks like Moon jumped on it. So it's going to be a fumble on a first down because of the fumble. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Had, had he not fumbled it, he would have been short, um, but fumbled the ball forward, and uh, they recovered. It was a nice play by Mark Banbury, who came all the way from his defensive tackle spot, not only to tackle the runner from behind, but pop the ball out, right. um, which is an impressively athletic play for an for a, a, a defensive tackle, but uh, unfortunately the Panthers couldn't jump on it. So Moon's got a nice little drive going here, and they're, they're running a lot of clock. This is going to be a short game on this pace. So here's McGowan's. He pitches. This is Roberts. He's got some room here running left. He's running through Banbury. Oh, boy, big gain here. That's going to be about 15, 16-yard gain. And Moon really is running downhill right now and, uh, and moving the ball at will, really. Kid's a great athlete, great runner, but it's not that hard to be a great running back when you don't get touched till you're seven yards downfield. <laughs> Are you saying even I could do that? No, I'm not saying that, no. <laughs> but, you know, we need to – DN did a nice job pushing him back in the middle of the field, but nobody was there to support, and he doesn't get touched till eight yards downfield. 
So now it's to Roberts. This is Banbury. Go. He's got him. And Mark Banbury had a, made a really nice play there. He got some pursuit into the backfield, held on for dear life to the legs, and uh, tackled him for only a gain of about one or two. And, and really, that's exactly what you talked about, that he got him before the momentum got started, and it was a lot easier there for yeah, the Panthers. For sure. That's what they got to do. I mean, you got to get him, get bodies on them when you're two yards downfield or at the line of scrimmage, not seven or eight yards downfield. It's just too hard. And the kid's a good athlete. So if it's one guy eight yards downfield, you shouldn't be surprised getting a 15 yard gain. Here's Sleeve on a little counter. He's going right up the gut, and boy, they're just pushing him back hard. And that's going to be another five, six yard gain. They get down to the 22. It's going to be third and three for Moon. This is a good strategy, I'll have to say. Moon is running successfully, and they're keeping the Upper St. Clair offense off the field. The clock is running. Uh, do you know much about Coach Lim? I know the Moon coach. I mean, Moon had had a historically poor program, really turned around, won the conference last year. Coach Lim's had some success. I don't know much about him, but I know he's done a great job in the last two years here. Yeah, he, he was there when I finished and, uh, you know, he's, he, you're right. He's got his program on track and uh, does a nice job. They're well, they're well prepared. That's an outstanding athletic play from McGowan's. Now, that, Brandon Coe had great contain. He was right there, but it, it's tough as a defensive end to tackle an athletic quarterback like that. He shimmied and got just uh, with a little bit of forward lean to the first down. So Moon's got first and 10 from the 18, and, and Coach Mann put a, a great point there. They've possessed the ball for a long time, kept the St. Clair offense off the field, and uh, you know, the Panthers have got to get tough here in the red zone. All right, empty set here. McGowan's back to throw. Wide open. And it's a boy wide open on the tight end. And he gets all the way down to about the two-yard line. Um, it, it looked like a wide open on a drag route. I don't think the Panthers expected pass there. And that's a 16-yard gain down to the two-yard line. That's what happens when you have a good running game. You open up play action and the ability to throw the ball. You're, you're right. And I agree. I didn't expect to pass. And... And that kid was wide open. And Sleva's in easy. They went quick. And Dustin Sleva untouched into the end zone. And Moon strikes right back. Uh, you know, we had just talked about how stout the Panther defense had been prior to that drive. And Moon really flexed their muscles on the interior line. Goes right down the field. Big, long drive. And uh, with the extra point coming, it's 13-7 Moon. Yeah. You said right back. It is on the ensuing drive. But that was a methodical, impressive drive from the Moon Tigers. The good thing, St. Clair always has the potential to score on a one-play drive, so St. Clair is by no means out of it and, and doesn't need much time to score. Um, but that was an impressive drive from the Moon Tigers. All right, Josh, what do we want to talk about here during this timeout? I know you got a, I got a bunch of issues that uh, I like to hear Coach's take on. Well, you know, Coach talked a little bit about the new stadium. One of the other things that's new since he's been here has been the uniforms. And uh, I know Coach has told me many times, but for those out there listening that haven't heard it, you know, one of the big changes besides the, the jerseys is the helmets. And uh, when you were here, I, I didn't know this, you said uh, when you came in the helmets were white. Every time I had been part of the program, whether it was ball boy or as quarterback, they were black with no logo on them. Now they're a little bit different. Can you give us a little bit of the brief history of uh, the black helmets and, and your, your well, history there? The story, yes, we did paint them black. And, we, and I thought about putting a sticker on them or something. But we were going to play Uniontown, which was the school I had just come from. And so a couple of the Uniontown players that I was – uh, close to, I was giving them the tour of the facilities. And, and I remember we were up by the wrestling room and something came up about the helmets and this one kid from Uniontown says, oh, I hate those helmets. They're so Darth Vader-like and scary. <laughs> and I, I made up my mind. That was 40 years ago. I said, I'll never change them. As long as the opponents are uh, <laughs> yeah. worried about them. Yeah, well, we loved them as players. We used to there you go. There's the kick. They go short. Here comes Jaden Keating. He's the up man. He makes it. He, Jitterbugs. Nice move. Keating's going forward. He's all the way across to the move, to the St. Clair 41. Good, strong run from yeah, Jaden Keating. Just get the ball and get what yards you can and uh, get it all the way out to the 42. That's a great way to start for the Panthers on this drive. Just to end up on it, we played uh, Bethlehem Liberty in the state championship game. And I didn't think of, you know, we were all black. We were the home team. 
And I guess the Liberty people just couldn't get over the fact that we were dressed in all black. And I don't know if it affected them, but I know we had a big night. <laughs> yeah, when you're up 41 nothing or whatever, uh, maybe it did. So a little option here, it looks like. Ethan pitches. Here comes Jaden, cuts it back. Oh, wow. oh, my. He had a little bit of gap on the cut back there and couldn't quite keep his feet. Flag so comes in late. Player for Moon is down. I, I didn't see what happened, but... Uh, Based on him being down, I, I would look for some sort of crack box. box. But speaking of that, we, I mean, we love wearing the all black. You know, we used to paint our ear ear pieces on the inside of the helmet black, black chin strap. I mean, it was intimidating to play a team in all black. We talked to Coach Junko earlier this week about the decision to change the uniforms and the helmets. You know, some of what he told us, which is interesting, because you see it with some of the recruitment of these kids going to college, is they like to keep the kids excited and, and fresh. They want to honor the tradition, which is why they went back to the black and white, but they also wanted to mix things up and uh, make things fresh for the kids. And so you've seen it in the uniforms with new jerseys every year. They, you've seen it with the helmets. But then on top of that, they've sort of done some of the unveiling on social media and otherwise to get the buzz and the hype for the young kids. Uh, Coach Junko talked a lot about that and, quote, recruiting your hallway, but getting the kids excited to play football that might have been on the fringe or played another sport. You want your best athletes on the field playing football. And that was some of the rationale behind mixing up uh, the uniforms. Oh, that stuff's important. It's funny. Um, there'll, there'll be real, there'll be stuff all the time that I think is just hideously ugly, like our basketball gear sometimes, shoes especially those kids wear. And, you know, I always remind myself, it doesn't matter what I think. <laughs> yeah. It matters what the kids yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. You know, I realize uh, they weren't going to keep the exact same uniforms that I had, but I, I, I guess I'll have to tell you I was a little disappointed that they messed with the helmets. Uh, I thought that helmet had really become a tradition. A yeah. Tradition. So yeah. we're, we're I don't think you could go think, into Mount Lebanon. I think that was first. a crack back block was the call. Yeah, it's first and 25. This is long. Here comes Dallums rolling left. He throws. Got David Pantelis. And I, I'm looking for an illegal man and eligible downfield. I think there's several lines. So was that supposed to be a design run, Josh? Does it look like or, the line released a bit. Or maybe a, or maybe a quick pass, and, and the line is told, fire off. And so some of these guys downfield becomes a penalty if you hold the ball too long as a quarterback. It's unclear if that's on the lineman or on the quarterback because it could be either person's fault. So uh, they're way behind the sticks now. I mean, obviously, we've, we, we've already – brought this topic up, but you just simply can't afford to have the type of penalties and a 15-yard crackback. Moon, back Moon is a, is uh, refused the penalty to make the down go to number two rather than first down. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, it obviously wasn't a big gain, but um, I think I'd have pushed, kept pushing him back, but I guess you know it's kind of like what you talked about. You don't want to give Pantelis a lot of opportunities no, to no. You know, break one. I think they may have called him out of bounds. I thought he made the catch, but it looks like they're spotting the ball back at the original line of scrimmage if they did decline it. So no, they're, it looks like they, no, it looks no, they like accepted, they're accepting. No, yeah, they accepted it. Yeah. They must have changed their minds because yeah. I was watching them over there. Yeah. So okay, we're we're now about first and thirty here for the Panthers, and uh, I I. I I assume most of you guys don't have a first and 30 play. <laughs> I mean, I think Coach will tell you better than I could, but I think you just want to get some yardage back so when you punt, you're able to put it in respectable field position and not give the ball over at midfield. Are there is press coverage on Dave. Oh, he, comeback route. Oh, he got his feet down. That's just beautiful. That is such great athleticism and body control from Dave. And a great throw from Ethan, who was running hard to his left. And beautiful stuff from the Panthers. That's the second time they've completed that comeback route rolling onto Ethan's weak side. It's a heck of a throw, but an even better catch getting his feet in there at the sideline. So that's 13 of those yards back, Josh. So uh, just, just what you talked about. It is interesting, Dave. You know, they're, they're sending a lot of people, and that means single coverage, press coverage. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see if they can give him enough time to, to, to spring David or even or even yeah. Aiden Besselman or Mateo. They, they can both get downfield. Alex talked a lot about two over three last week and two over two. Um, well, you got to look at Pantillas. Oh, here comes Jaden. Oh. He breaks through. Oh, and another penalty. Up. And that's going to be on on Dave Pantelis, the receiver. I, no, boy, this is I, really good. I, I watched that play. I'm not sure it is on David Pantelis. That kid literally grabbed his uh, shoulder pads and threw him to the ground. But they're walking back. I mean, I, I think it's an unfortunate call. Yeah. Oh, my. That's an unfortunate that, call. I mean, it's a great block by Pantelis. That official 
did not see the whole play. So this is the third week in a row, really, the Panthers have been victimized by a ton of penalties. It's, it's got to be frustrating for the offense. They're making a ton of plays. That was a just a marvelous run from Jaden Keating, breaking all kinds of tackles. It, it does have to be a little demoralizing. Yeah, it's an unfortunate call, but like we talked about, they have such quick strike ability that you really you, you have to keep going forward because you have the chance to score from anywhere on the field. And you were talking about, as I said last week, two over three, two over two. A lot of times, not now, they're in, they're in twins, but they have Pantillas single side with no help over top. And like you talked about, he really has a chance to get open when you have single coverage on him. So we're second and 20. Dallin steps up in the pocket. Now he eludes one guy. Throws. Here comes Sapolio. Mateo stays inbounds and gets across the 40 to the 41-yard line. So they get back 10 more. So we're back to third and 10. This has been quite a possession, but um, you know we're in a manageable situation here right. at third You down. lost 20 and you gained it back. And so... Look, you may not get the first down here, but at least you're not punting from your own 15, 10-yard line, um, which is absolutely what you don't want to do. So Ethan looks like he's going a little bit of tempo here. We have four receivers again in the game, as well as uh, Jamal Brown, the tailback behind Ethan. Pantelis is in the slot, and there's nobody within five yards of him. Right. It would be interesting to see if we see a similar play that we saw in the touchdown. Right. Now that guy's giving him 11 yards of cushion, but he's the only guy on him. They're coming up the middle. Oh, miscommunication there. Looks like two broke into the post, and he thought Ethan thought he was going to break out towards the flag or the sideline. That brings up fourth down here. Yeah, junior Nick Derubis was the receiver on the near side of your screen, and it was, it was miscommunication. Yeah, and he tried to hold off his route and get, you know, maybe go for the first down, and Ethan threw it long because he kind of ran out of time, and uh, the Panthers are going to be forced to punt. Yeah, but, but considering where they were on that drive, backed up 20 yards, punting from their own 40 is not a win, but it's not a loss, and uh, you got to be hope for a good punt here, and, and, and then you're not as worse off as you could have been. So it's going to be Banbury again, the senior linebacker, uh, is uh, taking on the punting duties here. Good rush, and it's a short kick. Let's hope, oh no, it went out of bounds, unfortunately. So Moon's going to have great field position here, all the way up at their own 45, 45 46-yard line. So tough break for the Panthers. They had a chance to flip the field, but that, that's the, the problem with Ethan Heaster being out. He's an all-conference punter. He is a great field yeah, shifter. Yeah. Could I talk about Tyler Rigger here for a minute? Absolutely. Our fabulous senior long snapper. He is he is excellent. <laughs> and Josh will tell you this. I used to tell young players the quickest way to make our football team would be to be a long snapper. And I think I told that to Rigger and he listened. <laughs> You know, as a former punter, nothing is more frustrating. I mean, that was not a great punt, but nothing is more frustrating when you see the guy jogging up the sideline, holding his arm, because talk about, you know, football is a game of inches. Well, what an imperfect science, the side judge or the back judge standing down here, looking at the referee is 45 yards away from you behind the punter, holding his arm up and telling you when to stop. You know, one of the things we work on, I work on at the NFL, is putting a tracking device in the football and actually seeing where the ball goes out of, Bound. I would love to see that, and for spotting certain things. I mean, it, it is unbelievable because even at the highest level at the NFL, it works the same way as it works at high school, which is somebody 45 yards away from where the punt went out of bounds is looking, based on his judgment, in the air, the ball crossing the sideline, where did it go out of bounds? And that can swing 5, 10, 15 yards sometimes. Um, and it's a game of inches like we talk about, and that's a big, big difference. Well, that's... Unfortunately, a, uh, a bad trend for the Panthers as they were able to again get downhill, get a big running game, and gain. And now, uh, you know, it, it's hard. If the Panthers want to get their defense off the field, they can't keep giving six and seven yards a chunk on runs. And so we're at third and three here, just across huge, uh, the Pan in the Panthers territory. Here. Yeah, huge absolutely. The pitch it's out wide. Here comes Sleva. He's got room. He's got the first down, and he's got more. He turns the corner. Here goes Sleva. Banbury's chasing him and pushes him out of bounds, but not till he gets to the Panther. 26, 21-yard gain for Sleva. Once he got the corner, it's hard. I mean, he's a pretty good athlete. They pinned our defensive end, and then it's just waiting on pursuit. So tough way to start this drive. I mean, start off with bad field position and then a couple first downs, big chunk play. St. Clair's got to stop, stop them, either get a turnover or make a stop here and make him try to kick a field goal. Yeah, turnover would be huge here. The Panthers need to get the next one. Here comes Sleeve up the middle. Panthers are a little more stout, but he bounces off, and again, he gets six or seven yards, just good forward lean. You know, we talk about in basketball sometimes, um, 
you know, it's a, st a battle of styles, who's playing whose game. And I think if I were to make the analogy, this appears to be more of Moon's game, controlling the ball, running the ball, possessing it, keeping St. Clair's. I, I feel like Moon's played the game they, the way they want to play it. I mean, it is tough. You don't often see at any level, let alone the high school level, a 6'3", 225-pound running back coming at you. And it's quite an athlete with good feet. I mean, it's almost a little bit like Jerome Bettis with his light feet, but delivering the blow. And, and, and that's really a tough thing for a defense to stop. And he gets about 10 more there, gets out of bounds, and uh, uh, Moon's going to have first and goal from the Panther 9. I mean, we had, we didn't talk about this yet, but my tailback when I was a senior, much different than some of our running backs when I was a sophomore and junior, but Sean Lee, who's a linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys, senior running back, big kid, 6'1", 6 6'2", 6 205 though as a senior, and definitely ran hard, but in a different way than this kid who's really delivering the blow. I mean, Sean was a physical runner, but this kid's a, a lineman playing tailback. Oh, that's a nice tackle in the hole by Luke Banbury, the linebacker coming in and filling. You know, Coach, it reminds me of your first state championship team. You know, you had Dougie Whaley, who got a lot of the headlines, who was a really athletic back, but you also had Pete Habib, who was a bruiser, who was impossible to tackle. And he really, you want to talk about a kid who inflicted punishment on the opponent, Pete Habib was one of those guys. That was a pretty good team. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. That was a really good team. We had, we had a lot of good kids. Phil Dunn was... A bruising tight end and linebacker. Well, you talk about a one-two punch with Habib and Doug Whaley. Oh, here's McGowan's. He rolls. He freezes Coe, but Coe's pursuing. Good rush from Brandon. Now McGowan's going to try to turn the corner. He can't do it. Just great pursuit from Brandon Coe. Relentless from that defensive end spot. Yeah, I mean, you talk about a one-two punch that St. Clair had back in the day. I mean, to have your two running backs at Moon is 6'3", 225, and 6'1", 215 in Roberts. I mean, those, those are two really big, strong running backs to bring down, and, and it wears on you as a defense. So you talked about being in shape conditioning. Well, there's another to be in shape physically and lifting, and when you hit hit this kid and, and he hits you as many times as they've been hit right up the middle, it's tough and it wears on you. So Moon's going to take a timeout here. They have third and goal from the seven. This is obviously a big play with 239 and a half. Panthers have got to hold him to a field goal. Who, who has Moon lost? Two. So, so Moon's two losses are Peters last week, which was a um, you know a, a, a slugfest, but but you know a, a pretty lopsided score. Even I it was watched closer. some of that on television. Yeah, so did I. And then they lost to South Fayette, and it was kind of a shootout. Um, at Moon got well behind, came roaring back, and kind of ran out of time. It was a, a very close. So game. they've lost to very good teams. Oh, they have. I mean, Moon is excellent. We knew this game was going to be a very competitive. Yeah, you mentioned that son, a one-two punch, and Coach has had a lot of situations. If you look at the 1993 Whipple Championship team, he had a big back in Allen Hamrick, who was terrific, um, and then Zach Ellis, who was a junior on that team who, was, who played at Dartmouth, who was extremely athletic. He's you know, still a good friend of mine to this day, but it is. It gives you a different look in terms of when you have backs of that size coming at you, uh, getting downhill. It's, it's a little different coming up and uh, trying to tackle them. And we're going to get into, uh, you know, we're going to uh, have some time at halftime after uh, some of the homecoming festivities to go over some of Coach's great memories here. And uh, so stay tuned. By the way, that your, your recall ability is better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the helmet story, by the way, is getting great reviews. Uh, Ryan Harker Rhodes telling me how much his guys loved that story. So um, we're, we're going to keep uh, keep you going here. So this is a big play here. Third and seven for the Tigers from the or third and goal from the seven. Oh, the reverse. Oh, it is, and he's going to throw. Oh, really special. He's throwing, he's wide open, and it's going to be a touchdown easy. He waited to suck the defender. What a great call. That was an incredibly interesting call. The Philly special, like That's Helmerts it. called it, the play you saw from Philly in the Super Bowl. Well executed, wide open, and uh, Moon scores again to make it 20-7. I mean, that was the quarterback who caught the was ball, it, wasn't it? Yeah, I was believe it so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you know, that was the kid almost. That, the kid that threw it, I was, I, I thought he was almost over the line of scrimmage. He could have thrown it about five seconds earlier. I don't exactly. know. If, if, if I don't know what he was. I thought he was going to up running it he still might have gotten in but he should have thrown that way earlier as it is it worked out it's unfortunate but a great play call by moon so a low snap kind of fumbled but uh, the kicker stopped and, and makes it so uh, 21 7 with two and a half minutes to go in the first half and this is a huge drive for the panthers they got to get points before the half huge drive but you know st Clair gets the ball to start the second half and so if they can score here whether it's a touchdown or field goal and get the ball to start the second half really can bring right back in this thing I mean it's it's unfortunate to be down two scores but by no means are they, are they out of it in any stretch what's that these guys are writing in about the helmets 
Um, I'm getting texts and tweets that they loved that story and they thought it was riotously funny. Well, I'll tell you, my wife texted in, hi to Stephanie at home and my parents. They thought the helmet story was great. They have seen my helmet, but I don't think they knew the background. So I've heard that story probably 15, 20 times, which is true of most of Coach's stories, but uh, not everyone else has. And you and I have spent too much time <laughs> yeah, together, yeah. Josh. Just the right amount. But, you realize uh, he was a ball boy in the seventh grade? Oh, I'm well aware. He wrote a book about me in the third grade. It wasn't about him. It was about football, but Coach likes to always say it was about him. Well. But, <laughs> he, but and, yeah. And, 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 um, and, and my first my first uh, coaching job at Upper St. Clair as the freshman head coach, Josh was one of my guards. So, I mean, it's we've, we've team, all known yeah. each other a long time. Yeah. So here's the kickoff, and they're going to go short, and this is Banbury. And he's going to deliver a blow, as you know, and uh, gets it to about the 45. So the Panthers will have good field position. Yeah, and I don't know if that's deliberate because they don't have a great kicker or they're trying to avoid Pantillas. But I think they're trying to avoid Pantillas. Either way, put, given, given St. Clair the ball up on the 40-yard line, 40-plus is really a... Uh, yeah, kicking at the Banbury short is no uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly, great strategy. Exactly. No, exactly. he's so athletic, and he's going to deliver a boom. So, so do, you, do you guys expect to see something down the field here to try to get a big play quick and change his momentum. Is that what you guys expect to see that? I, mean, I think that's the only play they have in their offense anyway. It's not like they're running the ball up the middle much, so expect them to push the field. The key, as you pointed out earlier, is don't get behind the sticks. No turnovers, no penalties. You can't start at first and 20. He's wide open. Wide open. And Sapoyo, oh, he did, couldn't keep on All his right. feet, unfortunately. Although, it, it make, yeah, it's important. you got to catch the ball first. Look, he did a great thing. I mean, it's hard sometimes. Coach will tell you. He said this to me many times. When somebody is so wide open, it's almost harder to complete the pass than if they're tightly covered. So he saw him breaking open before it even happened. I could see it. He saw it. Put that ball out into the green space. Let the guy go make the play. It's okay. Catch it. Fall down. Not the best throw. It's fine. You still have two minutes plus, and you're already inside the 20. Well, Alex Park said last week something interesting. He said, nobody has ever caught an overthrow, so it, make sure he catches yeah, it. that's right. And here comes Mateo on a little wide receiver screen. This is well blocked. Mateo's going, and he gets about five or six. Good little game for the Panthers as they get down to about the moon 12. And uh, time time's ticking, but the Panthers have plenty of time now that they've uh, sort of turned the field position. they got plenty of time. Yeah, I was surprised after the broadcast last week. Week. Coach Jungo didn't ask uh, Alex Park to come down and coach his quarterbacks or receivers. Alex talking about all the different passing concepts. Sounded like he had just stepped off the field. And this is Ethan straight up the middle, and he gets almost to the first down. This is going to be close. He's he may have gotten short. I think he's going to be short based on the far spot. We'll see. Oh, no, they gave him the first down. So I will stop the clock until they reset the chains. We got a minute and a half to go here in the first half. I'm going to give a, a, sh a shout out to my lovely wife, Ashley, who's actually listening to this game. I'm shocked. I didn't know she was listening. But um, Ashley, I love you. Happy, happy fifth anniversary, if you can believe it. Somebody has stayed with me willingly for five years. Not only that, somebody of that quality has stayed with me for five <laughs> She's years. She's a lovely and, and lady. And you're hanging out with us Yeah, I was going to say. Your anniversary. And tomorrow. You go. Tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. It's hard. It's hard to plan stuff during COVID. No question. Yeah. Um, my wife has been here. We've been here. We live in New York City, but been here since COVID started. And I got to tell you, um, she grew up in a family of, of all sisters, didn't have high school football where she went to school. So coming here, we sat on the hill for the first football game and seeing the band and um, what is Friday Night Lights. I feel bad that she didn't get to experience what a, what a regular game is like with a packed stadium. But uh, I've appreciated her and... Uh, experience appreciating what I'm so fond of and you know I think we sometimes take it for granted here living in St. Clair and Western Pennsylvania coach you spent your entire career here but having played in college at Yale with kids from all over the country I mean really the high school experience in Western Pennsylvania is really unparalleled I mean there are there are I should say there are some that are comparable in Texas and Florida but there's nothing better than upper St. Clair and Western Pennsylvania football and uh, it's really a special thing to be part of and kudos to you coach you created a lot of that so I mean it, this well, is a, yeah. a wonderful thing you're so, giving me a little more credit than I deserve. Dallin's got a man, and there is Luke Banbury. And he took a shot from 33, but that's a great drive, a great answer from the Panthers. They score with a minute 20 left, and hopefully with an extra point. They'll only be down seven, like you talked about, getting the open second half kickoff. And that is a, just a great mature senior response from the Panthers. And just like we talked about, I mean, that took a minute, right, to get down the field and score, and so St. Clair's never going to be out of it. The key is getting a stop on defense and then not putting yourself behind the sticks like we talked about. 
if you can stay positive side of the ball, uh, St. Clair is going to be in this game and, and hopefully can even take a lead. So Matthew Russell, the sophomore kicker, has drilled it right down the pipe. So the Panthers are back within seven, and that's a, a, a great sign. Now the Panthers have to cannot give up a big special teams play here. And Moon hasn't been as much of a quick strike offense. You know, they've been kind of a ball control stuff. But the one guy you got to watch is number 22, Dawson Snyder. He's a dangerous playmaker. And I have a feeling, I already called that this game was not going to be high scoring. I'm looking very, very poor right now with that prediction. Um, so I'm hoping the Panthers uh, are in a little bit of contain here and not allowing uh, them down the field. They look like that. Moon has a good kicker, too, it looks like. It's an interesting game. Uh, Moon's running the ball very effectively. And Upper St. Clair is passing the ball. Uh, you know, as long as it's not first, as long as it's not first and thirty, uh, they just can't cover these receivers of Upper St. Clair. So I'm getting good feedback from Mark Roy here, who says the best way to avoid dropping open passes is to just run bad routes. I'm assuming that's from experience. Helmer, did, did, did Roy run a lot of bad routes? I'm guessing he ran some of the best routes in practice I've ever seen. Uh, but, but uh, a great teammate nonetheless, I'll say that. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a beauty, I, I, I have, I have hit, to admit. Uh, his uh, wit is still intact. Oh, yeah. he's, he's, he's still top shelf in that area. So here we go with the kickoff here. This is Adelardo Sabarzo, um, the soccer star. And the lefty sidewinder runs up. Boots this one pretty good. This looks like Dean, the other receiver. He takes it about at his 10. He goes across the field. Oh, good oh he makes a, man, makes a man miss. Here comes Banbury again. Banbury has about 15 tackles already tonight. Neil's going to add one to special teams for good measure. So the Moon's going to have it on about their own 35 with a minute nine left. So what do you think here? Does Moon stay aggressive, do you think? Well, you know, it's interesting. They've had success running the ball up the middle, and their only passing plays have been off of play action. And so if you're St. Clair here, now you can sort of be content with giving up those five, seven, eight-yard runs. They, Moon doesn't really have enough time to drive the ball like they did the last drive. St. Clair cannot let them get behind behind on any play action or deep passing routes. That's really the key here with a minute and nine seconds left in this first half. And McGowan's really hasn't gone down the field yet. Uh, Ty McGowan, their quarterback, it's been, you know, he hasn't thrown that much to begin with, but it's been mostly short passes. Yeah. But he is dropping back here, and it looks like he is looking down the field. Co big senior Connor Schmidt's in there, and it I'm looks looking, like, how many is that Joseph Houck again? I've looked to call a timeout here if I'm St. Clair. You know, you get him behind the sticks. And they did. They called a timeout. I mean, you know, you get the ball with a minute. If you stop me here on second down, you have one more timeout left. Presumably they pass the ball. If you can get it with 30, 40 seconds, knowing the offense that St. Clair has, you really only need 20, 30 seconds, especially in high school football. You know, the, the clock stops after a first down, unlike college and the pros. But I might call, unlike the pros, if you get a first down, the clock stops while the chains reset. And so St. Clair doesn't need much time to get into scoring position. Pretty good job by the front four from the Panthers there. They caved them well, and that was, that was both Pollock and Schmidt, the two senior um, interior defensive players, who got in and kind of combined for the sack there and you're right this does sort of change the the look on things second and 15 do you think moon now runs power here or something and, and thinks though maybe, maybe we'll get a first down here i think i'd run the ball once so uh to force upper st Clair to call a timeout yeah i think the worst thing moon could do is throw an incomplete pass yeah <laughs> When we, when we were here as a quarterback, Coach used to say there are three things that can happen when you throw the ball, and two of them are bad. Is that a Woody Hayesism? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that being an you, interception. You guys better explain who Woody Hayes is because there's Good a point. lot of people. If you don't know the 60s and particularly the 70s Ohio State powerhouse dynasty, you wouldn't know. Uh, we'll go back to the Rex Kern era, Coach Render's favorite era of football. So they did go back to throw, but he did not throw the ball away. And, and once again, Pollock, the big defensive uh, tackle, number 74, is in on the tackle, and uh, Coach Junko will use his second timeout with 49 seconds to go in the first half. Now, if they're smart, they'll take, they'll run the ball again because St. Clair is out of timeouts, I believe, which will mean they'll have to punt the ball here, you know, around 10 seconds, depending on how good they are maximizing the clock. Coach, I'm hearing rumors here that you uh, spent some time at East Liverpool High School as an assistant coach back in the 60s. I did, yes. Uh, when I got out of college, I was at a small high school north of Steubenville. And then the guy that actually recruited me to go to Northwestern out of high school, uh, this is a long story. If I, but anyhow, <laughs> his name was Bob McNay, and he became the head football coach and athletic director at East Liverpool. So 
I went to work for the guy that recruited me out of high school. We just got a text from uh, JT Render, your son, no less. He's uh, watching in, in spirit, wearing his uh, high school jersey, I believe. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the hat that he stole out of our garage last <laughs> Saturday. I, I got I to say, JT, I love that uniform. Is that, is that the cropped? Uh, is that the cropped uh, stomach one, the one that I have of McArdle's, because that's the best uniform of all time. I know you can't wear those anymore, but they were the best. All right, third and 13 here, 49 seconds to go in the first half. i got to give my hat tip to my buddy Lauren Anderson for that East Liverpool fact. Good stuff, buddy. I appreciate your support. All right. So look for a run here. They want to just wind the clock. Don't give St. Clair any opportunities. Sleeve is going to try to turn the corner. It's Coe. Can they push him out of bounds? They, no, oh, no, they couldn't. They stopped. He, he was smart and fell down. So this will be the last timeout, or, or do we no, not have no any? No timeout. So they're going to have to punt the ball at about three seconds. St. Clair won't have much of a chance. My guess, I think that scoreboard's wrong. I think they used their no, We score. have none. St. Clair has no timeouts. Moon has one. Okay. What I think you're going to see here is they'll run it down to one second and call a timeout or two seconds uh, and, and then punt the ball. You know, if you're St. Clair, do you think about putting Dave back there and, and, you know, to try to you know get a punt? I know that he hasn't been doing it. Mateo is dangerous. Maybe, maybe their punter hasn't been great. I think you have a, probably have a better shot to fair catch the punt here and look. If, you, if Depending on how much time is left on the clock, looks like, Nine seconds. You, you have a better chance probably to call a fair catch on this punt and get one offensive snap from midfield based on how their punter's been kicking the ball. The interesting thing about that, and I, I totally agree, I think that logic makes a ton of sense, is you know, everybody's going to be looking for Dave. One of the deep threats that we haven't really seen much is the sophomore Aiden Messelman, the three-sport three athlete, marvelous, great straight-ahead speed. It'll be interesting to see if you have Dave and Mateo who are going to get a lot of the attention, and yeah. then all of a sudden you have Bess yeah. you know, running down the seam. If I was Moon... I would uh, do a rugby kick coming to the wide side of the field here. See if you can't run off all nine seconds. Well, close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that is definitely the move if you're Moon. If you're St. Clair, it's tough to get a return if they kick the ball out of bounds or something like that. So they're going to have uh, – Pentelis is not going back. You have number two for upper St. Clair. Mateo. Uh, Mateo, yep. So now look, look how they're maybe this is lined up for rugby, but they're lined up in an offensive formation. What happened they're not, to the they're clock? not lined up to punter. I think it got, it got a, we got a clock issue. It's down to one on the clock. And they're going for it here. It looks like they're going to take a knee. Oh, it was down to one second for how? Oh. So that was weird. When they called timeout, there was seven seconds. Ended up being one. Coach, like you said, to, to use a rugby kick to use up time. When you only have one second, you can do what they did, which is take a knee and, and, and kill the clock. So, All right, at halftime, yeah, the Panthers trail 21-14 to 14 to Moon. They will get the ball in the second half. And so uh, this game has gotten a lot more interesting here in about the last two or three minutes. Absolutely. I got a little tidbit. You know, you guys are getting all these texts. Um, uh, Steubenville, the Steubenville coach, is a good friend of mine. And uh, I went down to see Steubenville play Dover, which is my hometown, in the opening game. Well, to make a long story short, they're playing Dover again tonight in the playoffs. And... Uh, I got a text that Steubenville is getting beat 27 to nothing. Wow, somebody's got to be good to beat the Big Red by that score. I mean, that's... At, at, in their own stadium, yeah. the Big Red Stadium. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to pause to... Um, there's going to be some... Uh, some homecoming court festivities right, yeah. and we're going to probably watch that. I don't know if we'll have a live mic that Coach Holzer is going to MC that. We'll probably have that in the band. <laughs> we will come back um, with a lot of time left in halftime. We have some things we want to talk about. So uh, you can sit tight. I want to give a shout out to um, two of the members of the homecoming court here. Uh, one is Jaden Keating, the tailback. Um, the other one is uh, my, my senior point guard, Luke Gensler. Congratulations, Luke. We're proud of you. I hope you win. Uh, so we'll be back uh, for the second half uh, shortly. So we get a break? That was Blado to the quarterback. So Blado threw it. Blado, yeah.
with thanks to everyone who has made a difference in making USC the place we call home. We close our special homecoming program with the ever popular Civil War song composed by a Philadelphia bookkeeper and insurance agent, William Steff, with lyrics penned by American poet and abolitionist writer Julia Ward Howe. Let's bring on Battle Hymn of the Republic. There you have it, the pride of Upper St. Clair. The band is under the direction of John Seibert, band director, Joe Beaver, assistant music director, Emily McWilliams, assistant visual director, Paul Rush, percussion coordinator, Mike Shimako, assistant percussion coordinator, Jill Pulfus, auxiliary coordinator, Leanne Chamberlain, Assistant Auxiliary Coordinator. And this is Paul Fox, the voice of the Upper St. Clair High School Marching Band. And now to introduce the class of 2021 Homecoming Court, here is Upper St. Clair High School Activities Director, Social Studies Teacher, and Head Coach of the Boys Varsity Basketball. Let's give it up for Mr. Dan Holzer. Welcome, Panther fans, to the class of 2021.
Buddy, son of Liz and Dave Hall, is an active member of our Miracle League and Friendship Circle. Buddy's interests include swimming, listening to music, watching Disney movies, and especially spending time with friends. Miss Sammy Seawald and Mr. Zachary Reynolds. Sammy, daughter of Stacy and Scott Seawald, is a member of the Kids Helping Kids Club, president of National Honor Society, president of the Friendship Circle of Pittsburgh, member of a world champion Odyssey of the Mind team, and the class of 2021 senior class secretary. Zachary, son of Wanda and Bruce Reynolds, is a member of both our Pantheon and Chanticleer choirs and also performs with the Center for Theater Arts. <laughs> Ms. Marina Belezo and Mr. Jaden Keating. Marina, daughter of Judy and Stephen Belezo, is a student council senior executive board member, a senior leader with our junior mentor program, and an active member of both our best buddies and young life groups. Jaden, son of Julie Keating, a member of our varsity wrestling program and can be seen tonight playing as a captain of our varsity football team. Jaden can also be found refereeing youth football games during his free time. Standing in for Jaden tonight is his good friend, Jake Geisler. Let's give a big round of applause for our Panther class of 2021 homecoming court. The class of 2021 homecoming king is Mr. Joe Phillips. And the class of 2021 homecoming queen is Miss Mallory Glancy. <laughs> Panther fans, let's give this homecoming court one more round of applause.
All right, we're back here again. We've got a few minutes left before halftime, but um, want to give a shout out to our outstanding cameraman, former uh, St. Clair football alum, Greg Jaffe. Jaff, thanks uh, again for your work tonight. You're, you are the man. Also want to give a, a shout out to um, our assistant athletic director, also a former football alum, Sammy Gatano, who does a fabulous job here kind of coordinating things. Um, this is Sammy's show, and uh, I'm very thankful for his organization and, and all of his leadership here. So uh, let's take you back to the first half. Um, uh, the, the Moon scored first off of a fumble, um, and, and that was Dawson Snyder, their big play guy, who returned it for a touchdown to go up 7 nothing. The Panthers struck back. Uh, and made it 7-7 on a long touchdown pass. Ethan Dallum hit David Pantelis. But then Moon really started to control the ball, control the clock, ran the ball a lot, banged it in. Dylan Slava, the big, strong halfback linebacker, scored to make it 14-7. And then Moon got the ball back, sustained another drive, and then on a key third down went Philly special. Uh, ben Bladell, their outstanding defensive end, was in on offense. I guess he plays some tight end as well. Came around off a, a, an end around and then threw a touchdown pass back to Ty McGowan, the quarterback, and, and put Moon up 21-7. to St. Clair, not to be outdone, came right back down the field on a quick drive that was capped off by an Ethan Dallum pass to Luke Banbury, the senior heading to Cornell, and the Panthers got it to 21-14 to right before half. That's where we stand at halftime. The Panthers trailing by seven points, and... The Panthers will be receiving the football, so it, it's a good thing, although they really sort of struggle to defend the run, particularly in the second quarter. They're only down seven. They get the football. The offense, when they don't turn the ball over or commit penalties, has really moved the ball well, and uh, it'll be very interesting to see the adjustments at halftime, whether the Panthers can get, keep that vertical passing game going, get the big plays, and can they stop Moon, run, Moon's run game? Josh, what do you expect to see in terms of adjustments? Yeah, I mean, I think as you pointed out, Gavin, with their offense, with the Panthers' offense, offense they're never out of this game they, they can score from anywhere on the field at any time so what they really need to do is stop make some stops on defense right not turn the ball over not have a lot of penalties but more importantly just make a few stops because when St. Clair gets the ball they always have the chance and the potential to score um, but we cannot let Moon take six seven eight minute drives and move the ball down the field to punch it in. It's just going to be tough for the Panthers to continue to score from far away. Um, you'll get a few of those, but they need to make some stops on defense. So how do you think, you know, how do you see that playing out in terms of, what do you do if you're the defensive coordinator or Coach Shunko, Coach Robbins, one of those guys, what do you do differently in terms of, um, you know, trying to combat that run? I think Coach Donati may be the, Coach Donati yeah. may be the DC. Yeah, I mean, one of the things, you know, I haven't seen too much of it. You might see it in this second half is you start to put more people in what they call the box, which is with it between the defensive ends in front of the defensive secondary, but those linebackers and defensive linemen, you put an extra guy in there, and whether that's blitzing a linebacker, putting an extra D lineman down, you really try to put more numbers than they have to block and give yourself the advantage in the box. Make them, the, 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 the downside of that is you open yourself up to some passing. And so by putting more people in the box, if Moon picks out, up on that, you could look to see them run some play action and throw the ball. But St. Clair needs to do that because they need to stop the run. Letting them get seven, eight yards a carry just won't win the game, especially down seven here. If they go ahead and score, they're going to have to stop the run. Yeah, Ryan Lynn, uh, Moon's coach, has done a really nice job keeping the defense off balance. The Panther defense looked really stout on the first couple drives, and then uh, they adjusted well. And give them credit. Uh, you know, it'll be the Panthers uh, will have the next adjustment to make. I want to give a shout out now to uh, another one of our listeners and uh, former alum, uh, Josh's, one of Josh's favorite targets, Bob Petrini. Bobby, thanks for listening, buddy. Uh, I, one of my favorite uh, pass-catching combinations is the man next to me to Bobby Petrini. So thanks for listening, Bob. Yeah, you beat me to it, but Bobby, still to this day, I just played catch with him a few days ago, uh, some of the best hands of anybody I've ever seen at any level and was a phenomenal high school player. We were lucky. You know, when we were here, everyone knows Sean Lee, and he was an incredible athlete as our tailback, but Bobby Petrini, incredible wide receiver. Danny Caffaro, who went on to have a pretty good, impressive college career at the University of Pittsburgh as an unbelievable other side of the ball receiver and then a defensive back on the other side. Um, and we were blessed to have a lot of great players. Coaches had a bunch, so we just talked, Coach, about some of the great players on my team and 
Gavin mentioned some of the ones on your, your cha state championship team earlier. I'm curious. We sit here in this great stadium, and I was watching the Steelers-Eagles game last week, and they talked about Miles Sanders. You've yeah. played against some unbelievable athletes, not only at the high school level, but that have gone on to play in the pros. Who sticks out in your mind as some of the best athletes you've played against or had to coach against, uh, whether it be here or somewhere else in your career, um, in your 40-plus years of high school football? Well, there was there was a, a good group, you know. First of all, we we played at uh, Three River Stadium three years in a row, and we played. Uh, uh, Mac McCardle, Mac McCardle was the quarterback right there. We should give him another shout out. Mac was a legend. He before. called me to, or he texted me today with his son. I told him I was going to be with you tonight. But anyhow. I, I, will, I will say before you get into your answer, not to stop you. <laughs> I heard from him today, by the Ma way. Mac, Mac was a legend when I was coming up as ball boy. He had already left Upper St. Clair. But he was the one person to have his number retired and hanging at Outback where he used to go after the games. <laughs> and everything, every story was like this mythical guy, Mac McCardle. To be a quarterback in St. Clair was only to be hope to live up to Mac McCardle's second because don't, nobody was going to live up to Mac don't McCardle. Don't make anyway, go any sorry. worse. Go answer the <laughs> question, Sorry, go ahead, coach. go ahead, Coach. <laughs> well, anyhow, <laughs> we played in three consecutive years. We played North Hills, Penn Hills, and McKeesport. Penn Hills had a linebacker by the name of Ronnie Graham. Oh, is he good? who Tom Bradley recruited to go to Penn State. Then we played uh, LeVar Arrington from North Hills. And the next year, uh, we played Penn Hills, or I mean uh, McKeesport, with Brandon Short. Who was a monster. So, you know, we lost all three of those games, but we lost to perhaps... Penn Hills, North Hills, and uh, McKeesport's greatest teams. So this is McKeever on the second opening second half kickoff, and he's going to get a, find a little gap and get to about the 35, another a good field position for the Panthers. Um, and, and, you know, they've tried to keep the ball away from Pantelis, it looks like, with the shorter kicks, but they've kind of paid for it. The Panther up backs have done a really nice job. And we've talked about how Coach Junko has, you know, athletes and, and playmakers in those spots probably for this very reason. So, okay, let's see if what we talked about occurs in terms of, uh, you know, the Panthers keep trying to do that vertical passing game, get the big chunk plays. Um, um, and, and you know, keep trying to throw the ball sort of vertically down the field. And, and, and will Dowell have time to do it? He talked a lot about last week, two over three, two over two. Here they had two over two, and they decided to run the ball, but really had a good opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one coverage with Pantillas. So good run for them, had big success, but look for them to get Pantillas in single coverage and get him the ball, as Coach talked about. He's probably the best athlete on the field, and they need to get the ball in his hands here in the second half. Absolutely. Dallin gets eight there on the QB draw. Now they're... He's going in. I don't know if he's changing the play or whatever. He's talking to sophomore center Mark Banbury, and now he's, they got empty set. Mateo Sapulio in motion. They fake it to him. Now it looks like they're screening it to Keating, and he's just going to toss it away out of bounds. Uh, live to play another day, second and two. But um, a lot of pre-snap motion there, but uh, looked like Moon had a pretty good beat on that. Yeah. You, you're left with third and two, third away, smart play by Ethan. You know, when they motioned away, like we said, you had one one on one down here with with David Pantillas. And so they're looking to get that matchup and isolate that matchup and then get him the ball. So here comes Dallum. It looks like another QB draw. He goes off tackle. Oh, he skirts through. Beautiful little run from Dallum. Gets to about midfield for the Panther first down. And, and just like we talked about, worst thing you can do on your first possession is to go three and out. Right. Panthers have a first down. Got good field position around midfield. Now maybe you, you want to take a chance down the field. Yeah. This is a great – I would think this would be a great place for them. Yeah, they're not in any rush, though. Look, you're down seven, plenty of time. I think they want to get a little bit of a rhythm going. You know, they first half they had the long touchdown. They had a turnover. They didn't have too many long sustained drives. So I think you look here for them to get some rhythm going. As you said, deep shot. Look at that, Gavin. You and there it. it is, Aiden Besselman, the outstanding sophomore athlete. Down the field, we said watch for Besselman when they're paying attention to Pantelis and Sapulio. 50-yard touchdown pass, a dime from Dallum to Aiden Besselman and the Panthers with extra point pending to tie this game up at 21. You caught it. Look, you get, you get to midfield, you get a little bit of the rhythm going. You can take a shot downfield 
and, and have some confidence that you'll move the ball on second and third if you don't get it. And there, there they got behind the defense and a perfect throw by Ethan for a long touchdown to tie it up. And I'm going to tell you something, guys, and I don't get in the prediction game much as we see Matt Russell here to add the extra point. And the sophomore kicker puts it right through, and the game is tied. Did you say Besselman moved in here? No, he did not. Jamal Brown moved in. So Aiden Besselman, um, is, who's an outstanding basketball player, will be in our rotation this year as a sophomore, is a unique breed. He's almost a unicorn these days, a three-sport athlete. You don't see it very often. He has endeavored to play all three. He's a, apparently, from what I'm told by Coach Yates, a, a huge you know, college lacrosse threat. But Coach Junko convinced him to play football. He hadn't played football in a couple of years and immediately paying dividends because he is just an, a wonderful athlete. This is what Coach Junko talked to us about earlier in the week, recruiting his hallways. Besselman was a player that may or may not have come out for football, but Coach Junko and his friends and teammates were able to get him excited, get out here, and he's making a big impact, has been one of the best receivers for St. Clair this year, and, and that's what you need to, to do well is have your best athletes out there playing football. And so kudos to Coach Junko and, and Besselman's friends and teammates to get him out here um, because that's you know that's paying dividends for the entire team. Yeah, he's, he's an outstanding athlete. So this is going to be interesting to me. You know, we just talked about at halftime. How do the Panthers adjust to this power run game for Moon? I can't wait to hear you guys diagnose if there are any differences and, and sort of try to explain to me what you think the Panthers are doing to counterbalance well, it. One good way is keep them off the field. <laughs> so, yeah, well, that so is. Get, get turnovers or have long sustained drives yourself is a great way to not let them run the ball. Avalardo Savarzo with the kick. Dean takes it at the 10, goes across the field. Good oh. little cutback. He's got a seam here. Uh-oh, here comes Dean. He's down the field. He's all the way down the 50. Dean's gone. He's going to go, and that is going to be a huge momentum shift as Dean goes 90 yards for a touchdown. Jeremiah Dean, and that is a backbreaker. You got all the momentum back, and 90 yards later, Moon regains the lead, 27-21. The kid's a great athlete, but he didn't have to do too much. Right up the middle and just ran really fast through an open hole. Didn't really make too many people miss and, and got, got in for the touchdown. Unfortunately, you asked the question about how do you stop the run game well if you're not on defense you don't have to but that's not how you want to do it so hopefully St. Clair can go back on offense drive the ball and uh, get another chance to, to make a special teams play and their special teams coverage has been marvelous so far this year I will point out their leading special teams tackler and the guy who's really the key on there Ethan Heaster the junior you know do everything tailback is uh, is injured and out today and I'm wondering if that isn't paying uh, you know, or causing some issues here on the on the kick coverage well, St. Clair is going to get a chance to answer the answer the favor right here when they receive the kick. Hopefully they kick it deep, give Pantillas an opportunity to return the ball. If not, I don't expect that, but if not, hopefully they can drive the ball down and eat some of this clock and, and tie it back up. Did you say you didn't think this would be a high-scoring game? Oh, I did. <laughs> Was that you? And, and I will say this. I, I am wrong a lot. And, no, you're, and, and no I you're not. And I take great pride in it because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> um, but th this one's going to look like all-time bad if we keep on this pace. Is it, is it? So it looks like JT Render is uh, is critiquing his father's coverage by claiming that he got the dates wrong on some of the uh, so, some of the games. Although I will no, say, he's wrong. I, I think JT is wrong here. So okay, it was I can Penn Hills, McKeesport, and uh, North Hills. It and wasn't Connellsville. No, Connellsville was before that. And, and, well, yeah, it was before it, but it's not the three. You guys asked no. me who the great athletes were. Yes, no, you're I did. right, and yes, I can I take you through my high school career because my freshman year, we beat North Allegheny in the finals. Then we lost to, to um, Penn Hills. JT better be careful or I'll tell the story about missing the tackle against LeVar Arrington. <laughs> well, I think yeah. you should tell it regardless. Yeah, I was going to say, nobody, nobody has more ammo on JT than Coach here, so I, I love the feedback, though. So, all right, Moon's going to put the ball back in play here. 10-29 to go in the third quarter. Moon leads by seven. This is McKeever again. Cuts to the outside. Ooh, nice special teams tackle there. And, and it looked like uh, they were tired of St. Clair getting the type of field position they did. And, um, yeah. Now St. Clair is going to start at the own curious from, a, curious from a coach's perspective, when you keep getting the ball a squibble to the up man, but you have the opportunity, you, sometimes you see an up man toss it back to your returner if you have space and comfort. Sometimes a coach not to. It's obviously risky to anytime you pitch the ball, lateral the ball. What would you be telling the dude? Is that something that's that's uh, ill-advised or sometimes? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pitch it backwards in, in this particular game. Uh, uh, they 
you know, they, they got it out across the 25, which is not 90. Oh, and here you go yeah, again. Dallin's got Pantelis and just overthrows him. But again, it's just like you talked about. They've got the single coverage there, and, and Pantelis had Dean beat cleanly. Look at Mateo going back. He was wide he, open, too. I mean, uh, I don't know what they're – as good as I think they're coached on uh, offense. offense, I'm not sure the – same time is spent on defense. Well, we talked about this early in, in kind of our opening that Peters Township, the game was competitive, but Peters beat them down the field a lot. You see, a long, intercept, a long incompletion like that's not all bad because now this defender's got to worry to death about what David's going to do next. And that, unfortunately, was a, a just total breakdown in the offensive protection. Baumgartner in, no, or excuse me, Andrew Sampson, the defensive tackle in, and now the Panthers are in trouble. They have third and very long. Yeah, it's just like we talked about. Don't get behind the sticks, whether it's from penalties or sacks. You cannot have negative plays. And so they missed a wide open play. That could have been a touchdown. You get one sack, and now you're looking at third and 16. That's a really tough position to be in. There is no great play for third and 16 in anyone's playbook. Nah, it's a shame. They Again, they had the play on first down. Sometimes it's a game of inches, and he just missed Dave. And uh, now, you know, third and 15 is, uh, is the danger zone, as they say. So let's see what the Panthers have. Dallum here. Got a back next to him. JB's trying to pick up the blitz. Dallum's coming up. The oh, he's got a man wide open again. Here comes again. Mateo again. Oh, oh right my off God. Mateo's hands. Really great job by Ethan. Stepping up in the pocket. Really put that on a line. Threw that much harder than he needed to. Mateo was wide open. Ended up getting there, um, but just out of the reach off his outstretched hands. Unfortunate. And the Panthers will have to punt here at 4th and 16. Well, Coach Render really nailed this one. I mean, he basically said, I don't know why, based upon what Moon is giving them, that they're not going down the field consistently. And now that's what you're seeing. And you know, I'll be surprised. I'll be very surprised if we don't keep seeing it because it's there. Whether they're not completing them. You know, due to you know just slight See, misconnections. Dave, David could run an out pattern anytime he wants now, and the guy will be off because he's he got beat deep, even though it was an incomplete pass. And then they'll come back to the post, I think. Oh, great punt. Good punt by Banbury. It's going to be a fair catch called for and taken at his own 40, but that's that's a good punt. That's a 40-yard net, um, which is exactly what you needed there in terms of some of the field position issues. So here we go. Can the Panther defense be a little more stout here at the point of attack and try to regain some of that momentum that they lost on the long kickoff? You know, I just got a text from one of our great teammates, uh, Jeff Harshman, who's watching. Jeff was, you know, didn't play on the team, but was a team manager and really great, great part of the team. And I look down here on the sideline and see some of the youth kids in their jerseys participating. You know, we talked about how great Western Pennsylvania football is and, and experience, and it's not just the football on the field. Although that's great, and looking down there and seeing all those youth kids, and I know Coach Junko does that deliberately, but but those people matter a lot too, and they're a big important part of the experience here at Upper St. Clair. So shout out to Jeff Harshman, shout out to the youth, and Coach Junko for getting them involved because I think it really helped make uh, this experience special for everyone. Yeah, I love you, Jeffy, and I love the Harshman family. Great, to, great to have you guys uh, tuning in. Jeff, I'd like to say hello to you if these two guys would ever be quiet long enough for me to jump in there. But uh, hello to the whole Harshman family, one of the great families of Upper St. Clair. Totally agree. So here we go, second and nine. The Panthers shot the gap there a little bit. Banbury had good pre protection, and they're going wildcat here, and B Pantelis made a great tackle. And it looks like they're a little more stout here. That's 74 Pollock and 71 Schmidt, who have doing a really nice job here on the interior. And now uh, they've only had two runs out of the wildcat with Sleva and only gained about three or four exactly. yards. They've been stacking the box, and here you are, third and six. And that's what St. Clair needs to do. They don't have a great offense at third and six. They have a great offense at third and one because we can't stop the run. As you see some of their big guys jogging off the field here, it's a different it's a different play call and a different situation when you're looking at third and six. So it looks like the Panthers are now going to a, more right. of a pass rush situation here. Mortimer's on the field instead. The big guys are coming off. I would be careful for the QB run or the or the run here. No, it's McGowan. He's looking to run. 
He's coming to the sidelines. Oh, great move on Robbie Hendricks, and he's going to get the first down. He froze him, and unfortunately, the Panthers only rush three, and when you do that, you are susceptible to the QB run, and uh, he got it. And McGowan's a really good it's athlete. It's unfortunate because they had the coverage there, and uh, he just broke contain and was able to scramble for the first down. But really good effort by, by the St. Clair secondary. Just need to get home, as they say, by the, by the defensive line and get pressure. You know, they're not bringing numbers. They're not bringing a blitzer. They just need to make a play and make a make a block or miss. And that's the problem, having an athletic quarterback. Uh, McGowan's a dual-threat guy. He's a big kid. Um, very tough. He's been shifty, too. So here comes McGowan. They're going to throw a little quick receiver screen, oh, and it's dropped. Yeah. Wow, he was open. Um, With and blockers in front. Yeah, absolutely. He had a convoy there. It was a really well-executed play, but uh, didn't get the football. Good break for the Panthers. Uh, second and 10 is looking a lot better than what we would have had there. So it'll be interesting to see here. We, it, it'll be interesting to see here. The Panthers cannot afford here to get this, you know, to give up a five or six yard gain here, like you talked about. Yeah. Give them into a ma another right. manageable situation. Second and ten, you got to make. You can give them two, three yards, but you can't give the seven or eight. Yeah, correct. That's exactly. And here comes Slava. That's what I expected. He goes hard up the middle, and he's going to get about four. Split the difference. Yeah, there you go. No, not bad. Banbury again coming up from his middle linebacker spot. I think he's cheating closer and closer to the line yeah. of scrimmage. It looks like make them consistently convert third and six is a good position to be. You know that. They did it last time on a, on a broken play scramble. Third and six is a hard thing to convert consistently. Well, possession is such an important part of this. Time of possession has been a, probably a huge in Moon's favor. Being quick strike is great, but it's hard to do when you don't have the ball. So the Panthers have got to get off the field here. Exactly. Now you look here, four down linemen, two guys. I mean, you really want to pound the box. They're going Roberts right up the middle, and he's going to get it easy. Easy. That was a big hole for the Panthers. Panthers even kept their base defense out there, and they still went hard for Roberts right between the tackles, and uh, easy first down for Moon. Yeah, I don't know how you combat this because it's just even when they've done a good, you know, good job on first and second down as they did, Moon looked like they were, you know, more than content to maybe make it four downs and run hard at them with Sleva and, and Roberts, and they're they're just moving the ball. I mean, Coach, what do you what do you look to do here when they they're bringing extra rushers? And it's Roberts again, and that's Pollock. He's standing him up. Good job there, along with Brady Bartusiak, the junior linebacker. Moon's got a big advantage now because they're in four down territory. They they would never think of punting here. So they got four downs to make ten yards, and they've been averaging what three or four at least at least so as a defense i mean you, you send extra you put you either put more people in the box or do you send extra rushers or what do you do i think you got to move those linebackers up a little bit mcgowan fakes he's going to look down the field he's got the tight end co is in the backfield again oh great move he beats brown here he comes to the outside he's going to get to the corner and that is going to be a 31 yard touchdown run on the cutback from mcgowan and this is a really really tough offense right now for moon they are clicking and st Clair has got to get off blocks and got to do a better job it's really, here it's really unfortunate because you know they had everyone covered there was a double route by the tight end they had him covered, and just like when they scramble for a first down, quarterback breaks contain, makes one man miss, and then he's off to the races. And it's tough because, like as you said, he's a great athlete. And so they're doing what they need to, but he's winning the one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one matchup, and that's presenting a huge problem for the St. Clair defense. So the Moon now takes a two-score lead, 35-21, to 21, just under six minutes to go in the third quarter, and it's definitely adjustment time for, from the Panther defensive coaches. They have got to figure out a way to either get a turnover or to slow this offense down. So, Coach, you talked a little bit about some of the good players that you've played against in your time. i got another one I want to mention. All right, go ahead. All right? Yeah, yeah, go for it. <clears throat> A team doctor, Bethel Park's team doctor, his name is Rob Shulkin. Oh, yeah. Rob Shulkin played nose guard for Mount Lebanon back in the uh, 70s. And uh, he was outstanding. I mean, outstanding. He played at Pitt, didn't he? He played at Pitt, yeah. yes. I could never really figure out why he didn't have a little better career at Pitt. But you'll have to trust me that he was as dominating a player 
uh, as we ever faced. And that's saying something. No, no, no. That's saying something. You know, I was going to ask you about some of the more memorable games, but we can get that into that at the next break. You know, I think it's it's great to hear some of these players because obviously you've played against the Miles Sanders and the LeVar Arringtons and some of the Rob Gronkowski, some of the big names that we all know that went on to have NFL careers. But to hear some of the guys that are now doctors and other things um, doesn't doesn't mean they were any less imp impactful at the high school level. And now it's a really short kick. Here's Banbury. Can he break through the wave? I was hoping he might be able to get through that first wave and take it. You know, it. Stuff like this is great. It's what I love about football, you know, kind of the generations. You know, when I was watching the Peters Township game we played, you see Corbin Hondrew as a standout for Peters and, and, you know, his dad, Scott, and particularly his uncle, Mark, who was, you know, around when I was there, was probably the best high school football player I ever saw when I was at St. Clair. And so, it, you know, this is what I love about football, how, you know, the generations pass and you just, you, they're memorable players that come and you see these guys come through our program and other programs it's, it's one of the wonderful things about it Bino Cook told me when I first met him he says we were in the press box at the Steeler game and he said forget the game listen to the stories they're better <laughs> <laughs> here comes Dallin he's gonna go got deep behind again him he's again. got Dave Oh, what a cat. Oh, he couldn't quite pull it in. Dave did a great job adjusting to the ball, but um, Dean, Dean recovered nicely. He didn't quite beat him as cleanly as some of the ones have been. Decent throw, and frankly, I think if you ask Dave, he'd probably say that's a catch he expects to make, maybe, but it's a tough catch. Maybe, but he got behind him, and Ethan, under, unfortunately, underthrew him by a step or two. Had he really put it out in front of him, he'd be, he'd be walking in the end zone. Still got his hands on it, could have caught it, but a good play by the defensive back. Number two, who I think had one of the only inter – Ethan threw two interceptions last year. One was by number two on Peters. And so, you know, they, they're they playing too. It's not just pitch and catch. They're out there playing defense. A um, little bit in front of him, it would have been a touchdown. Here comes Dallman. Uh-oh, he's in trouble. And he's going to go down again. And unfortunately, part of the game when you get behind and you know they're throwing the ball is they're going to pin their ears back and rush. And uh, they keep going point. home. That's a good point, Gavin. David, finally, I've been w waiting for him to run an out pattern. He was semi-open. You know, I, I don't know, but it looked like Ethan was only looking to one side there. And, and he had just had him beat the play before. I know as a former quarterback, when you had it the play before and you get the opportunity right on the next play, you want to take another shot and go right back to him. But when you only look at a one receiver side, it's tough. And, and when you do that, they got some pressure in that end of the sack. And Dalm's once again under pressure here. He's rolling to his right. He's going to throw it way down the field. He's got Dave again. And there it is. What a throw from Dalm. And here comes oh Dave Pantelis. God. And the Panthers, quick strike on third and 20 from 65 yard out. What can you say about Dave Pantelis? First of all, first of all, unbelievable route by David and getting open and running to the football. But Ethan on the run to throw the ball that far in the air. And, and just like we talked about on the other one, he put it out in front of him and let Ethan, who and let David Pantelis, who's the best athlete on the field, run to the football and go get it. And when you do that, there's very few people that are going to get to the ball before him, and, and it ends in an unbelievable long touchdown. We have uh, a Moon player down here back by the line of scrimmage, but uh, gives us a little bit of time. I mean, Coach, what did you see on that? He just ran across the field, outran two of the defenders, and, and Ethan threw the ball 45, 50 yards in the air and let David go get it. Well, I think uh, I'm not sure. Ethan planned on rolling out. No. But David did run the post. That was his pattern. Mateo came up the near sidelines and uh, they crossed and David went to the post. Well, Ethan broke the contain and, and he knew where David was going to be. And you're exactly right. He put it out there and let him run. When the play starts breaking down, and, D and Ethan starts running and kind of like schoolyard stuff, there's nobody better. Yeah. He just, and that's, look, I know Ethan well. I've coached him for a long time. He is just one of the most competitive kids I have ever been around in my life. There's nobody like him. He is just diabolically competitive, and you're starting to see it. When the chips get down, I mean, that was a huge play. Huge. Third and 20 down 14 points. <laughs> Looking like things are bleak. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's a one-score game. And we again. talked about it, right? Like, they're, they're never going to be out of it because they have that potential. They just, to get ahead and to keep the lead, they really need to prevent themselves from getting behind the sticks and that's they've done that too much whether it's negative plays like sacks or penalties if they avoid those this would be a much different game yeah absolutely so this is this is Matt Russell again he's been perfect on his extra points 
and that baby is up, and that kick is dead center. And with 4.45 to go in the third quarter, the contrast in styles continues. The deliberate Moon offense running the ball. The long, big splash play passing game from the Panthers. And it's made for a very entertaining football yeah. game. But, boys, we have got to find a way to stop and get yeah. Moon off the field on this drive. You know, it's interesting. When we talked to Coach Junko, he talked a lot about the strength of the Moon defense and the St. Clair offense. And really, the diff those have both been true. Um, St. Clair in that matchup has, has won, has gotten enough chunk plays. But the real difference in the game so far has been the Moon offense and the Moon running game. And St. Clair has not found an answer. And so you hope here, whether it's a turnover, a couple negative plays, a penalty, you, St. Clair gets a break and gets a stop um, because I think, you know, they've had the ability to score on offense. It's really they need to get a stop and stop them not only from running the ball, but also eating up the clock, which has been a big problem. Yeah, I think if you'd ask Coach Junk uh, when we talked to him on Wednesday, if he'd have been satisfied with 28 points scored with 4.45 to go in the third quarter, I'd think he'd have been thrilled based upon all the, the, the returning players that Moon had on the defensive end. But I think he'd have been shocked that Moon had 35 points on the offensive side of the ball. So, um, hey, you know, this is, this is why we make the big bucks. Got to adjust and try to figure out a way to get some stops here. Sabarzo kicks it deep. This is the first order of business. Stop the kickoff. Kick, That's a kick, great kick. directional kick. Dean cuts back, and the Panthers corral him. It looks like a gang tackle there at about the 26-yard line of Moon, so much better job on the coverage. Brady Bartusiak on the tackle. And you talked about, you know, Coach Junko would be surprised that they have 35. I think you'd also be disappointed to know that one was off of a fumble and returning it for a touchdown. One was off of a kick return, a 90-yard kick return for a touchdown. So, you know, St. Clair, the problem is you give up these long methodical drives. It takes one play, one scramble, and they get a touchdown coupled with a couple of these key costly mistakes. And it really puts you, as you said, 35 points. It really shouldn't be that many. It's been a couple of untimely errors. St. Clair needs to stop that and then stop this running game, and they'll be in good position. Extremely good point, actually. I didn't think about the special teams and uh, defensive scores. So a little counter up the middle. It's Roberts again, but that's much better from St. Clair. Jamal Brown, the sophomore linebacker, shot a gap, came in there. Good stout stuff from Joseph Houck at the point of attack, and uh, that's the type of first down play that the Panthers need to need to continue to have. Yeah, and a different play call for Moon there was a trap. A, a lineman coming across the line of scrimmage caused the running back to take a little bit of a pause, and that's not been their strength. Their strength has been straight ahead, run right at you, ISO type of running plays, not the trap slower developing plays. I have to take that back. That was Connor Schmidt. I don't see Joseph Houck out there, and I haven't for a while, number 66. A very important part of the defense. That, that could be a big problem for the Panthers. I hope he's not hurt. So this is a run, and that's Pollock. Nice job stopping Roberts before he got going. Very short gain. And uh, here's a legit third and long. This is a big play here. They've Huge got play. to get off the field here. Huge play. Down seven. Look, if they, you don't want him to go on another long drive and eat the rest of this quarter up. So third and seven. Great opportunity to get a three and out and get the ball back for your offense and really keep the momentum. Yeah, I don't see Joseph Houck on the sideline either. And you're talking about, you know, a, a, you know, arguably their most productive defensive lineman this year, number 66, the senior. I hope Joe Houck is okay because he's been marvelous so far uh, in the 2020 season for the Panthers. So here we go, third and eight or so from their own 29-yard line. Let's see what Moon comes up with there. Empty, empty set, empty three, set here. three wide receivers down here and two at the top, and you'll get a timeout for Moon. Yeah, again, first big third down again of the second half, and Moon once again <laughs> takes a timeout. You, you want to watch, I think, here for McGowan running the football. That is something they have got to hem him in. He's been really dangerous running. So, Coach, in this time out here, we started to talk about it, but do you have any memorable games, whether it be here or somewhere else? Obviously, you played a few games at Hines and at Three Rivers. Um, I went to the state championship you played in at Hershey. We're not going to get into all of them right now, but do you have one or two that stick out? And maybe you can tell us about a few later, but uh, any memorable games that stick out in your 40-year career? Well, yeah, there's... We beat Newcastle in Newcastle in, in a huge crowd. And this was when Lindy Laurel, their longtime coach, was, you know, rolling. And, and uh, we got behind and threw a halfback pass and won the game. And that was uh, – and then we played North Hills twice in 1989. 
We'll hit pick that up in one sec. Long third and seven here. McGowan's back. Jamal Brown is there, and he gets home. Huge sack. JB with a big blitz up the gap and a big sack. It's a huge play for the Panthers. I mean, we've, talk, we've talked about now multiple times. They're not a good offense when you get them in third, six, and seven. Like Coach Junko said, make them throw the ball. They don't have to when it's third and one or two. But third and seven, they are not a great offense. They rely on the quarterback scramble, and that time the D lineman got home and got a sack. And now we're at fourth and 15. They'll be punting St. Clair, looking to pick up the ball midfield or even better. The key yeah. was the first down play where they got virtually nothing. Absolutely. That changes the whole. They came in on a rush. It's a pretty good punt considering the rush. And, oh, it's going to take a, a good moon bounce. Out of bounds, about at the 40-yard line of the Panthers. So still good field position. Yeah. I mean, to, to get them to go three and out and start with your own 40-yard line, that is a great series for the St. Clair defense. And, look, the, the offense has not been the problem tonight. When they can stay away from the negative plays, they've moved the ball and they've had some big plays. So we'll see how they do here starting at the 40-yard line, but only down seven, still in the third quarter. Plenty of time for the St. Clair offense. Coach, let's go back to 89 um, when we beat number one uh, North Hills on that uh, nationally televised game. I I'll never forget it. You won the States that year. I want to hear about this. Well, we played <laughs> perhaps the biggest crowd they've ever had at Mortarelli. And... Uh, it was on national television. Uh, Sports Channel America was <laughs> the name of the channel. And uh, uh, one of the Miami Dolphins uh, uh, was the color commentator. And it was a huge crowd. And um, we got behind, I think, 26 to 7 at halftime. And came back and won. It was, it was a keeper. Uh, Eric jumped up. He, Eric was a little manager. Oh, no. And just like we talked about, Gavin, cannot have the negative plays. First down, get some momentum, short pass, running play, something. Go with an easy pitch play, and you fumble the ball, put the ball on the ground. Luckily, they got it back. But now you're sitting here at second and 17 or 18 yards, and it's a really tough hole to dig yourself out of. Yeah, I'm guessing the I'm guessing the coaching staff wanted to surprise them. They figured, oh, they're going to keep chucking it down the field. Wanted to go with a run play, but uh, just um, you know, it wasn't executed well by the Panthers. And now uh, second and 17 is not where you want to be, as Josh just said. Be interesting to see what the Panthers come up with here, whether they try to go down the field again. Fake handoff here, good. Here comes Dallum outside. He's being chased by Bumgarner. Oh my God, he's got Besselman again. And Best looks like he has it, and he does. Great catch from the sophomore, number 13, Aiden Besselman down the field for a big Panther game. Incredible, incredible body control by Besselman to get in bounds. I thought his shoulder landed out of bounds, but apparently he got it in. Great play by Besselman. Ethan also did a nice job there. D-line got some pressure, beat a block. Ethan got outside contained, threw it down the sideline, put it where only his guy could get it. And uh, to his credit, unbelievable play. Negative play negated. Here we are, first and 10. Let's stay on the positive side of the sticks. So down now rolling, rolling left. He's got Pantelis. He chucks it rolling left, and that's going to be a Panther I mean, touchdown. Dave Pantelis from 32 <laughs> yards out. Extra point pending. We are tied. What a game. Just like that. I mean, just like that. Two big plays, and it's a touchdown. St. Clair's offensive passing game, as Coach said, is just not stoppable if they can stay on the positive side of the field. I watched David on that play. What he did is he ran an out pattern while Ethan was rolling out. And then he planted and cut up the field and he was behind the guy instantly by five yards. Yeah. No question he's one of the best athletes out there, if not the best. And Ethan and him have a chemistry that uh, is paying dividends. I mean, it's just amazing the aerial attack that St. Clair has given the defensive pressure that Moon is able to put. I mean, Ethan has made most of these deep passes on the run. He's had to, he had a touchdown in the pocket early in the game, but most of these deep passes here in the second half and the second half of the first half have been on the run, rolling out, and like you said, Coach, it might be scramble drill. He breaks contain, quarterback, running a wide receiver, breaks off his route and just goes vertical and gets open. That was a planned rollout, though. That was, yeah. And I think the long pass to uh, Besselman. I think that was a planned rollout as well. Uh, you know, I used to roll out. I loved to roll out. When you were a coach or quarterback? When I was a quarterback. <laughs> 
and obvi obviously Ethan does. I mean, he seems to be more comfortable throwing on the run, which is a little unusual, but he's he's more athlete than quarterback. He'll yeah, tell you that. And, uh, I mean, the aerial display that they're putting on, uh, you know, Dallum, Pantelis, Sepolio, Besselman has been something special tonight. Now it has got to be defense again. I mean, you know, this what, what, what momentum shifts here? 14-point game, third and 20, and then all of a sudden we're tied. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, that is the great thing about St. Croix's offense. Moon doesn't have the same potential. Their potential is here on special teams and on defense to get a big sack or a big turnover. That's where they've made the big plays. St. Clair has done it on offense. And so now St. Clair just needs to get a stop again and give their offense another chance with the ball. I mean, it, this is, I will say this, we still have a minute left in the third quarter, 35 all, and Good thing we didn't take the under when you were uh, throwing out the numbers earlier. That's why I don't gamble, because I'm wrong <laughs> just so frequently. But I hope you guys keep letting me hear about it the rest of the night. Well, Moon maybe has used up all their favors. They, they, they got a kickoff return. They got a fumble return. Now they're going to really have to work. And I, I don't think they can stop St. Clair in the fourth quarter. Yeah. You just hope that St. Clair doesn't let them possess the ball here and eat up a good chunk of this fourth quarter. Here we are, 47 seconds left in the third quarter. And uh, second down, you know, they're gonna they're e easily going to eat up this rest of this quarter. And you hope that St. Clair can get them off the field before eating up too much of the fourth. So this is Sleva again. That's a pretty good job shooting the gap. You know, you guys talked about, are they going to start sending linebackers? Banbury was basically in the backfield there, forced him wide. And it looked like um, Schmidt helped clean up. And um, now you have a third and four opportunity to get off the field. This is a tougher, tougher down for St. Clair, third and four, than third or seven, third and seven. But still a stoppable situation for the defense, and they need to get off the field. Robert Gallagher did a nice job. Uh, he, he, he has come in uh, as a, a backup uh, defensive tackle and did a nice job on that play as well. So that's going to be the end of the third quarter. We're going to have a third and three from Moon Zone 37 when we return here, and the score is tied at 35. Coach, you don't have too many 35-35 games in your tenure. What, would you be losing your mind right now, I'm guessing? Probably. <laughs> yes. Well... I was very blessed to have some great defensive coaches over the year. It wasn't very often that we uh, let the other team score 35 points. Yeah, I mean, you had some unbelievable defenses. I mean, the state the state team particularly, um, you know, holding a former NFL quarterback to, what, six points or seven points uh, is, you know, pretty stunning. I was at that game in the freezing cold, Hershey holding Kerry Collins to, you know, one touchdown. I mean, that's... That's pretty special. Right and was there. always it was, only, it was only a minus twenty uh, wind chill. I don't know why. But the other part that you're not speaking about, you did have good defensive coordinators. But even when I was there, coach always focused on special teams. The third part of the game would bring in a soccer player to be the kicker. Um, special teams are a big part of it, and and having a kick return or a fumble on offense. I mean, some of these points are not necessarily on the defense. And so you can't lose sight of the other plays and the other ways that Moon has scored. Uh, it's not all on the defense, it never is, but special teams are a big part of the game. Absolutely. So let's see what Coach Donati has up his sleeve here in terms of uh, figuring out on defense. Gallagher is still in. I hope Connor Schmidt, big number 71, is okay. He is, he plays both ways. He's probably just gotta so get a blow. Big third down here. Big third down. Let's see if they go power again. They do, they do. it's Roberts. He stood up, but he's gonna lean forward Good forward lean there. Gets about six. That will be a moon first down. Unfortunate, you know, St. Clair got pressure and pushed their own offensive blocker into the running back in the backfield, but not enough to get him wrapped up, and, and he got his uh, four or five yards. So another moon Tigers. Now it looks like a cramp. Uh, I think we've seen a couple cramps tonight so far. It's not, as I said, it's not super warm, but it's not cold either. No, I mean, it's a beautiful night for football. It's probably the coldest game these guys have had so far. You know, a lot of it probably has to do, there's been a lot of long drives. These, this, their offense has been on the field a lot. And so I think that weighs on you when you're, when you're on the field more than they typically are. There, there are some people who are just susceptible to cramps regardless of how fit they get. I want to give a shout-out to Rami Dubani if he's listening. Uh -oh, uh, my, yeah. call, my former colleague at Clark Hill uh, and, and partner in, a attorney, in the attorney world, he was a great football player at St. Clair, but I used to always tease Rami because he would always cramp at some point during the game, and we tried everything to try to figure out how to deal with it. I mean, he played every play both ways, but uh, we would always you didn't, know, you joke didn't eat, about it. He didn't eat enough bananas before the game. <laughs> that's, that's, what, uh, that's what all the adults would say. They'd talk about potassium yeah it's funny you know um, there was all the myths about eating bananas people drinking pickle juice drinking Pedialyte I'm sure coach has heard it all 
Um, you know, I think one of the, the funny, interesting things was my first NFL experience. Uh, I was in the locker room at a Pro Bowl. And uh, it was one of my first years at the NFL. And in the locker room, I see Ray Lewis, who was on the AFC Pro Bowl team, walk over to some of the other players with a jar of pickle juice, no pickles in it, and he put Kool-Aid into the pickle juice, and they all passed it around and drank it. And I had never actually seen anybody do that at the high school or even college level. I had seen Pedialyte. I had seen other things, but never actually drinking the pickle juice. I thought that was an urban myth. Uh, but sure enough, my first uh, NFL locker room that I was in, I did see Ray Lewis passing around the pickle juice. That sounds absolutely terrible. <laughs> we want to give a shout out. Oh, JT's gotten a lot of attention tonight. Eric Grender is also uh, listening from the Hamptons tonight. So, uh, Big E, man, thanks for listening. Here comes Roberts again. He's got a – oh, that's a nice cut to the outside. Pantelis pushes him out of bounds, but not until he gets probably another first down. And uh, looks like they had the ability to stop him. But Roberts is pretty shifty too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, he, I mean, once you get this corner and gets outside, he is a load to bring down, and uh, he's had great success up the middle. So to see him break outside uh, should be concerning for the St. Clair Panthers. Now, and Coach pointed out the one time we stopped him this half was we stopped him on first down, and their Moon's winning first down again. They got nine there, and uh, got to be better on first down. Yeah. It's going to be Roberts again, Bulls forward for about three, and that'll be a moon first down. And, and you know, again, Coach mentioned this on the last drive. When they get, you know, about to this territory, it's four down territory. So a team that's running forward like they are, stopping them in four down territory is very difficult. you got to get really good first down plays, or you've got to, you know, shoot a gap, get a loss, or get a turnover. Yeah, no doubt. Now, Coach, I know you hate to compare your players or talk about the best players, but of your two sons, who was the better high school football player, Eric or JT? Oh, that is, you, you, that is awful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot, but I, I, JT was asking me to ask. <laughs> that is classic. <laughs> they were different styles. Oh, here he goes. Oh, Paul oh, couldn't rap. quite get him down. Here comes McGowan to the outside. Oh, oh great. And it's a fumble. on the ground. Pick it up. And Jamal okay, Barry's on dude. it. What a play from number 25, Luke Banbury, the senior linebacker. Their quarterback is hurt. Their oh, and, quarterback is hurt. and McGowan's is down. Uh, he's, uh, he's okay. I think he's just frustrated. But Gavin, that's what we talked about, though. St. Clair needed to get a turnover or a big stop. That is what they need. Now St. Clair, for the first time in a long time, has the ball not down. Tied or up, St. Clair has the ball can have a chance to possess it and move it down the field. Two of the Moon guys here getting help off. 53 just got a little bit of a help. And then the quarterback number six down here looks like a cramp, like you said. But huge play by the defense. Looked like they were going to get a sack, get the turnover. And now here they are sitting on the positive side of the field, tied up. Well, the two guys that really deserve a lot of credit there, first was Tim Pollock. Um, the big defensive tackle came right up the middle and, and, and just stopped the, the, you know, stopped the momentum there. And then Banbury was chasing him down, made an incredible tackle, got the football out, and then Jamal Brown on it. That, that's probably as big of a play as we've seen in the ga game so far because we only have 10.44 left. We're in the fourth quarter in a tie game. All yeah, of a sudden, and if St. Clair goes up, you see number six here limping off for Moon, their quarterback. That could loom large when Moon has to throw the ball, which they have not had success doing so far tonight. And he's a run threat. So if you guys want to hear something staggering, I'm going to give you a stat from our USC stat crew who's just the best. Um, Ethan Dallum so far, through three quarters, 13 completions, 22 attempts, 328 yards, five touchdowns, no interceptions. I think that's as many yards as I threw for my entire sophomore year maybe <laughs> as a quarterback. I'm not sure. So here comes Dallum. He's He can do this too. He runs to the outside. Unfortunately, doesn't have a whole lot of room. Got to get pushed out of bounds, and that's going to be a loss of about three or four. So the Panthers have done themselves no favors on first down tonight. No, really. It's like almost as if they like the third and 17 throw a deep play. It, it's worked for them, but the, I don't think as a coach that's something you want to rely on too The often. interesting thing is the way their offense has been going, it, it really doesn't make any difference what the down and distance is. Yeah. You know, they're going to they're gonna chuck it anyway. They're going to chuck it, and the receivers are going to take it the distance. All right, so second and 13, Dallum fakes. He rolls. He's being chased again. He throws. Now there's the comeback like we talked about. It's Pantelis. Can he get by a man? He does a little bit, and I think he's reached got a first out, down. Reached out. Looked like he got it with the stretch. Great awareness by both Pantelis and Ethan. Hit it as he made the break, and then 
David got to the sticks, which is what you got to do. Great awareness by him right there. He was only open by six yards. Well, I want to go back to what you said. When you keep getting beat over the top, you said he's getting 10 yards on that out pattern every single time because they're so afraid of going down the field. That's what you saw. Yeah. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if, you know, you don't need to get, you know, 50-yard gains every time. 10 is fine. It'll be interesting to see if we start seeing that. it's about time he runs a post pattern, too. Okay. Let's see it. First and 10 on the 43. This is Jamal Brown. No, he faked it to him. Re, uh, RPO, read option. Dallum takes it, gets about seven on first down. Good gain from Dallum, good read, and yeah, uh, they yeah. are deep into moon territory. It wasn't, wasn't really what uh, – RPO was a run pass option. That was just a trade option. He was going to either give it or keep it, and he decided he had the lane there, and he pulled it and kept it himself. Interesting. Okay, so we've got about seven. Panthers, uh, that, that is a good first down there. Great and first now down. we're in second and manageable here. And they're probably, as, as you mentioned before, in four-down territory themselves. You know, this is long for a high school field goal range, but uh, first, here comes here comes the Ooh. big hit from Two Pantos. flags, probably both on St. Clair. A bunch of flags. One's going to be uh, peel back, peel back on Pantillas, and the second one's going to be holding in the backfield. So, unfortunately for St. Clair, that positive first down play is going to be negated by a very negative uh, second. Down has play. Moon has Moon had a penalty tonight? I mean, St. Cl- Clair's had about five or six penalties. I don't think Moon's had a penalty tonight. You might be right. So they're either the better, best coach team in America, or <laughs> we're not. Um, you know, St. Clair's going to get in, uh, picked here. Yeah, some of those. I mean, obviously, when, whenever you see multiple flags for the same penalty, like David's block, unfortunately, you know, it's an easy call for these guys. So, so Josh, we're even getting media attention right now. Um, uh, Not a football player, but a baseball player, Mr. Tyler Feldman, um, who is your old next-door neighbor. Yes, that's right. um, Who is a a TV anchor. He's a a bona fide star. We're, like, pretending to be uh, on on Upper St. Clair local media. He is a uh, regional superstar in the broadcasting world himself. He's giving us some attention on the Twitter. So uh, thanks, Ty. I appreciate it. You're the man. You know, we heard from uh, Coach Render's son, who JT claims that Eric was penalized more than James Harrison, which is hard to do. So he said that alone should put him clear number one in terms of who was a better high school football player. <laughs> it's like asking you what, which one of your sons you love the most. Just, yeah. just ugly stuff here. Same question. <laughs> All right, second and 22 here, uh, just across midfield, and the Panthers have to do a lot of work here. Now wide receiver screen. Here comes Mateo across Gets to the 45. Ooh, almost breaks that tackle. Good tackle from Moon, but gets to about the 41-yard line or so. And like we talked about, probably in four-down territory here. And so now you're here at third and 15, 14. You get another seven or eight yards here and give it a manageable fourth down and let yourself an opportunity to go for it. I think you're right. I mean, this this is a scoring game. This isn't a field position game like, you know, some of the ones we've seen. All right. Third and 15 here. Dallum is back. Pressure comes back. Oh, what a move. He had Sleva. He's got Mateo. Mateo's got a lot of room here. Oh, my God. He's got some room down the sidelines. And he gets out of bounds. But that's going to be a first down for Mateo Sapolio. Really smart play by Ethan taking what the defense gave him. Just unbelievable play to pick up that unblocked rusher. Make him miss. That was all on the quarterback. Made him miss. Found an open Mateo. No one around him. Easy first down, but really spectacular play by Ethan. I thought Ethan was going to get killed. I didn't think he saw the backside rush, and then he just spun out. Beautiful athleticism. Here comes Dallum again. It's going to be a run. He follows Jamal Brown into the hole. Good gain. Another strong gain on first down. That one's about eight or nine, and the Panthers are possessing it. Now, I love that type of feedback. (laughs) I love that. Eric Render is complimenting the play-by-play man, but not as much the color analyst. So, thanks, E. I appreciate it. Your check is in the mail. Maybe that's just because I put uh, his dad at in a decision point, him or his brother. No, I know they no were question. both great, but I didn't get to see either of them play. So, Love them both. Two good men. Here comes Fakes to Brown. And a screen. Unfortunately, I think he caught it, and that's going to be a loss of yardage. Um, you know, obviously, I think you catch it in the grand scheme of things, but um, it, it, he probably would have been better suited to yeah. drop it. And to me, it looked like a bounce. I was surprised they gave him the catch, and unfortunately, they did. It's a loss of two or three. Puts him at third and five. That's technology if you're watching on a big screen. Can link the computer onto a big TV. I, I couldn't figure that out. That's what young people do usually. Here comes Dallum. 
And oh, they got oh, him to move. They used the hard count. count. Unbelievable. I mean, Ethan's done a lot of really smart things as a senior quarterback that you would hope and expect. By using a hard count there to get them to jump makes it third and two, a much more manageable third down. St. Clair's now potentially in field goal range depending on their kicker. I know they haven't had the most success this year, but he, he has been perfect tonight on extra points. And I was at practice earlier in the week and saw him hitting from mid-30s to low 40s. So we'll see what St. Clair decides to do, but hopefully they can get the first down here and not worry about the kicking game. Yeah, I think that's the first penalty on Moon tonight. <laughs> yeah, they, they might have it right. I think you're right. I mean, it, it's, so this will be interesting. B Big Banbury in the backfield. They're going QB sneak. And it looks like on a second effort, a little push from the wall, yep. and uh, they got it. And Mark Banbury is an outstanding run blocker of the center. I think that they probably just went right up his butt. And that may have been, Gavin, was, was he under center there? That may have been the first snap he's taken under center all game. We he did, was. We did talk to Coach Junko about this this week. They've, they've tried to put in some more plays in the goal line formation so that they can be more diverse and less predictable in that goal line formation. Now you're going to see it pay dividends as they get down here in short yardage. It is harder to spread people out and use the shotgun formation. All right, so now Dallum's got a new fresh set of downs. He tries to skirt through the middle. Great play by Sleva to close. I thought Dallum might have had a crack there to get to the end zone. Sleva did a great job closing there. Great tackle. It's only game of two. Seven minutes to go, 35 all, fourth quarter, and uh, this has been a dandy, boys. Yeah, unbelievable finish. Luckily, St. Clair is in a better position than they've been really the majority of the game. Having the ball with a tie game here driving themselves, doing what Moon had done to them in the first half, really drive the ball down the field, eat up a bunch of the clock, um, and keep their defense off the field. So here we go, second and eight from the 10. Panthers can get a first down before they get to the end zone, which is a big deal. Um, but be interested to see, here comes Dallin, he rolls right again. He's looking in the end zone, he cuts it back. He's going to try to run it now. Oh, he sneaks through. What a play oh, by Dallum God. into the end zone. Really? The Panthers take the lead with 6.18 to go. Great cut about the seven-yard line. He decided he was going to run the ball, put his foot in the ground, made it one cut, and right to the end zone. I was going to say a little bit ago when you were talking about field goal, I thought there is no way that they're going to attempt the field goal. <laughs> well, good thing they didn't have to. Great run by Ethan. Puts the Panthers up 41-35 with the extra point pending. Oh, has Dallin been fabulous tonight? Unbelievable. I, I pointed out his stats, but it's just been more than that. Fabulous tonight. Russell up. You're right. It's been Russell it, good. It, it, as you pointed out, it's not just the stats. It's the making the defense jump with the hard count. It's avoiding the unblocked rusher. It's some of the small things that a senior quarterback you would expect but may not show up in the stats that have really let these Panthers go ahead 42-35 with six minutes left in this game. Game's over. <laughs> Bold prediction from Coach. Moon will not be back. I love okay. this. I, I mean, Luckily, Moon does not have an audio feed of this broadcast for any motivational purposes. <laughs> but uh, with six minutes and 20 seconds left in the game, um, you know, Moon's had an impressive, uh, several impressive drives on offense. I think, to your point, Coach, they haven't moved the ball through the air well, and their quarterback now, who is a running, who is a running threat, also got hurt on the last drive. Um, but they have not been lacking for offense so far. So interesting prediction from Coach. I hope he's right. Hey, hey, Coach. Apparently, we're thinking uh, some some of your former players are thinking a booth of you and me could rival Jim Nance and Tony Romo. <laughs> Big Matt Fennell thinks it's the case. Ryan Harper thinks it's the case. I don't know, man. Those take, guys are smarter than I thought they were. Take this show on the road. My man Chris Howie's watching from uh, down in South Carolina. Howard, good good to hear from you. And of course, my man Crazy Steve, strength coach extraordinaire. I know you're a Bethel Park Blackhawk, but you're all Upper St. Clair now. Well, coach now, won't tell you. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Gavin. Not kick off here. This is Dean again. We've got to keep him hemmed in. Here he goes again. Cuts to the outside. Good pursuit from the backside by Jaden Keating. Coach won't tell you, but he has been in the booth with Jim Nance and watched him call a game. So he has some unfair preparation experience. And then Jim has gave him a shout out on multiple occasions, has given you a shout out over the air, Upper St. Clair. I think his nephew played for you, is that right? His nephew, yes. Yeah, so Coach has had a little unfair preparation. Jim advantage. Nance is a, I've run into him at the Steeler practices a couple times too. He's a great guy, very, very humble. 
we're getting good, we're getting good feedback from Alex Park, who was so great last week. If he thinks we're doing a good job, I I, I think we're doing a good does job. Does he think we're doing a good? He job? does. Either that or he's a good liar. This is sleeve up the middle. Look at him bowl forward for like six or seven. He is just so tough. St. Clair is going to have to make a stop on some of these runs up the middle. Can't let them continue to get six, seven yards. Uh, Gavin, Coach has some experience broadcasting. What's your background with this? Because I, I, obviously you, know, you have some natural talent, but you've done it over the years. I know you told me at one time you thought this would be your career path. What sort of is the background on your experience doing some of this play-by-play stuff? Well, I did. After this play, I will get into that. Um, so McGowan's, who is – no, is that McGowan's? 34. Who's, who's in a quarter? Yeah, that is McGowan's. Okay, that's – they didn't quite get the first down here. So to answer your question, um, I grew up wanting to be Lanny for Terry, who's – been giving me all kinds of grief two two booths down here who's here calling the game i got a lanny story uh, oh let's br- please after well, all the ammo he's, he's been talked giving about me. being with jim nance in the booth <clears throat> i stood behind uh lanny at uh, yankee stadium which was a, a yankee pirate game which was a thrill for me because i was a big yankee fan my whole life so so third and one. Here comes Sleeve up the middle. He's going to get it. Gallagher up to third. fill and, and along with Robbie Hendricks. But uh, Third no and problems. one is where they shine. I mean, they we cannot stop them in short yardage plays. We need to get them at third and six, third and seven, and make them throw the football. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, to kind of finish on that, you know, I interned with Lanny, and I, I did a bunch of stuff with him. And then, um, you know, I've done plenty of broadcasting. I did the uh, Adelphia game of the week when Adelphia was a thing uh, for football for, you know, a good part of a year. And obviously I worked at ESPN for a year. But, you know, at the end of the day, it just wasn't what I wanted to pursue professionally. So here comes Sleva. He cuts back. I didn't know you worked for ESPN. I did. I worked for ESPN a year, uh, my first year out of college. But, you know, the road to get where I wanted to get on the path I was on was just not plausible. Um, do I think I could have stuck it out and maybe gone on the path I wanted to? Yes, but I wasn't willing to put in what I think it would have taken to get there. And really, law was a good fallback for me. It's been a really good career, but honestly, I'm very passionate about this. I love it. I take it very seriously. You never know who might be listening or watching. <laughs> you don't. You don't. Uh, the three of us might go onward and upward here. God, I hope well, so. You know, working at the NFL with some of our broadcast partners, I've seen what those guys put in to do it. And, you know, we're having a good time up here telling stories, but the, the level of preparation and work that those guys do, and Gavin, to your point, you know, those guys start at the very bottom, doing high school games, doing small college, going to remote places to call games. It is tough, and uh, they do a lot of work. It's a long, hard career path. Um, but I've been fortunate to see the guys at the top from behind the scenes, and it's really impressive. You know, we talked a little bit about – I was sitting in the truck when uh, Coach Gruden was a play-by-play guy, the color guy for uh, – uh, ESPN. Go ahead here. It's first, second, and short. Yeah, we just got a neutral zone infraction. Oh, here comes Roberts, and he's going to get it for top ball loose. Here Rumble. comes Jamal Brown. He's got it. And that's a big play. I couldn't tell who knocked it out, but it looked like maybe Mark Banbury, the sophomore, number 55. Huge play. We talked about, you know, the one way to probably best to stop them was to force turnovers. Two huge turnovers in the fourth quarter by the Panthers. Jamal Brown, two recoveries. Big play by the Panthers. Unbelievably big play. Coach it may prove to be right about Moon not coming back, but this is going to be a different kind of challenge for the St. Clair offense. Can they run the ball? Can they kill the rest of these three minutes and 33 seconds? We don't need the 20-yard touchdown pass. We now need the four yards, or Coach used to say three yards in a cloud of dust. That's what we need now here to eat off these last three minutes and 33 seconds. You know, here's where I wouldn't be – I'm not able to fo- coach football right here because I would throw the bomb here. Because I, I would I would continue to throw because they, they can't cover it. No, I mean, it, it, you score, if you keep scoring points, they it'll take they, them time to get the ball back. Right. And another Swag. another penalty looked like motion uh, before the snap, but Dallas back for a loss. Um, they, they may decline this unless it was a, a dead ball foul. I couldn't tell. He caught a legal for. Let's see what the call is here. Waiting for the call. So that's not a pre-snap penalty. It's a legal formation. So, well, Josh, nothing new here. We're in second and long again. Yes. Just, we got them right where we want them. <laughs> <laughs> the, good th- the good thing is that does run the clock. You know, once they spot the ball, we'll see if St. Clair runs the play clock down. 
here at 18 seconds, 16, 15. They snapped the ball with 15 seconds. Here comes Besselman on the end around, and there's not much here, and he's going to get taken out of bounds. Oh, they said he went out, but I think he was in bounds. That's a tough call. And unfortunately, the clock has stopped now with we, three no, minutes, 11 seconds now left. We, we talked about Ethan doing some really smart things as a senior quarterback. You know, I'm surprised, Coach. I don't know what you think, but I'm very surprised he did not take the play clock all the way down to one when he snapped that ball with 15 seconds left on the play clock. And then to let your running back, not Ethan's fault, but... If you're going to run the ball, even if it's for no gain, you stay in bounds and run the clock here with up seven with the ball. You really want to eat up or make them call a timeout. Running out of bounds stops the clock, and they wasted 15 seconds where they could have hold, held the ball before snapping. Yeah, Besselman, as athletic as he is, he hasn't played football in several years. Probably not in terms of situations. You know, the guy that's going to have the experience to know what to do there. So this will be really interesting here. Yeah. I, you know, Moon's got plenty of timeouts left. They got two left. You know, they, they, ended, probably, they ended up using one though, right there, which I don't. I, I don't know if they said they got an injured player down. There. Yeah, Russo oh, okay. was injured. So okay. So it's interesting, um, you know, this gets really back into the discussion we were having earlier. Do you, you know, make him use the timeout, run the ball here and move the clock, or do you try to take a chance down the field? Again, I'm stupid aggressive. Again, this is why I'm not coaching football. I chuck it down the field. I try to hit a big play and, you know, put this one out of reach. Yeah. I think with third and 16, Coach, I don't know what you think. I think here you do take a shot, but I would have liked to use up more of the clock before you got to this point. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. The worst thing that could have happened was a first down penalty. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened. So now, Gavin, you know, I think you take your shot, and then if you punt, you try to make them do one of those long, methodical drives, but in the three minutes that they have left, which will be more of a challenge. You know, they haven't had too many big splash plays. They've had these long, sustained drives. They don't have that much time to do that if you can get a good punt and good coverage. Uh, if you don't convert here on third down. Yeah, so, you know, the reason I go long here other than because I'm stupidly aggressive is because you have any number of targets you can use. They can't cover everybody long. So, you know, who do you use? You have Dave, you have Mateo, you got Best. They fake it, and here we go. Ethan's rolling left. He's got Besselman, and not qu can't quite hook him up. They ran an out to the stick, and it would have been a really tough throw rolling left. So would have been a tough catch, tough throw. That leaves you at fourth and 16, like we talked about. You really need a good punt here. You need to protect, and you need to cover. Like we talked about, special teams. Turns out to be a pretty important part of the game. So we got three minutes and four seconds left, and you're right. The interesting part about this is you wouldn't think in this day and age in football the clock would be an issue, but because of how deliberate Moon is, because they're mostly a running team, maybe maybe the clock is an issue up seven. Well, we'll see. They'll get the ball here just south of three minutes and have to go, hopefully, 70 or 80 yards. This is the biggest punt of Luke Banbury's short punting career. Great snap from Rieger again. Okay. Pretty good one from Bans. Tough one to field, a little short, good bounce. Okay. So down to the 25, they have to go 75 yards in 2 minutes and 56 seconds to tie the game. So St. Clair needs to make a stop here and make them put it in the air. So, I mean, tackling is going to be at a huge premium. Moon's big plays have not been, you know, vertical passing like St. Clair. They've been on, you know, cutbacks and missed tackles and things like that. Um, you know, so what's your defensive strategy in terms of, uh, you know, bend but don't break or contain? You know, what do you do here? Well, I think, first of all, this is a big play right here because I think Moon will run the ball and they got to – and here it is, right up the middle, and it's leaving. Nice tackle. Again, Mark Banbury, number 55. Not bad. Not they, bad. Got, they got four yards. That's better than eight. And, but the time is running. And, you know, the clock does stop momentarily to replace the sticks when you get a first down. But, um, you know, it can't take them three, play, three plays each time to get a first down. That's not going to fly here. They have two timeouts left. Here we are at 2.31 and going. And uh, two timeouts, but they have 70, 70 yards to go. McGowan's again, and they're going up the middle to sleep. A great play at the line. No, they, this was blown dead. Yeah, blown dead. And it looks like it is. Delay a game? What was it? False start? Yeah, false start. Now that's a big penalty because that's the equivalent of getting a two-yard loss on first down. And so, you know, we talked about this team doesn't function as well when they're behind the sticks and have bigger games. You're going to probably have to see them go a little more vertical in the passing game. And that's not where they've shined. There's no question they got to mix it up. They got to throw the ball. So here comes 217 and counting here. Panthers up seven. 
trying to hold on to the lead. It's a screen. center screen. Yep. It's Sleva. He's cutting up the middle. Great hit from Banbury, but Sleva still forward lean. Gets about seven or eight. Looks like it's going to be third and four. But that clock continues to roll. We're at two minutes now, and you've only gained six, seven yards in the last minute. So two minutes to go, 67 yards to go to tie the game. I don't have enough good words for how well Luke Banbury has played tonight. He probably has 20 tackles. He's just been unbelievable. He is an unbelievable hustle guy. I mean, last week I watched him chase down and save a touchdown. He's made so many hustle plays tonight. Oh, that's a great play up the middle. It's close. Oh, he's I don't short. Make it short. Oh, he's short, yeah. He's Br short by a good yard. That will be fourth down and a yard to go. What a fabulous play by Brandon Coe, number 32, the defensive end. And we're at, we're at a minute and a half, so they're going to get right on the ball. St. Clair did not get everyone off the field, so we're going to see a flag here for too many men on the field. Yeah, they were trying to get the short yardage package in. They were trying to get Pollock and Schmidt back in, and... Um, I guess they had too many men on the so field. The refs are going to stop here to, to discuss. We have a minute 23 on the clock. The ball on on the Peters Town, uh, excuse me, the Moon 35 yard line. A minute and 23 seconds left. Down seven. So legal substitution is the call. So that's only a five yard infraction. Not a huge deal in the grand scheme yeah, of but things. It's, but it was fourth and one. first down. Yeah, so. correct. They've now used up half of their time and moved the ball 15 yards. So San Quentin needs to continue to stop the run and look for Moon to put the ball in the air here again. Now it's empty set, and Panthers kind of have their big package in the game. This will be interesting. And they look for the slant, and that doesn't really help you. That's a four or five yard gain. Keating close Short of well. the sticks, so the clock will continue to run unless they want to burn one of their two timeouts. I think you give them four and five yard gains. Oh, San Quentin's trying to get their guys off the field again. And, and they, they do this it. time, yeah. So three-man rush from the Panthers, trying to contain the quarterback. Banbury, great stuff by Mark Banbury, number 55. Three-man rush, man. and he got through. Looked like he was being uh, held a little bit, but he got through and was on the quarterback's legs when he tried to throw that ball. Yeah. Makes it tough on the quarterback when you're under pressure, but also great coverage by the secondary. And their quarterback looks, oh, they're just getting a play call in here. Okay. So 53 seconds left to set the scene. Moon's got to go 55 yards. Field goals don't help you. And the Panthers have a seven-point lead, 42 to 35. Three-man rush again for the Panthers. Coe, Mortimer, and Banbury. But here comes Jamal Brown. He's blitzing. It's a draw by the quarterback. There you go. Uh-oh, this is a big gainer here. Here we go. Now, it, good good contain. He slides, and the clock will stop momentarily, but it's only about a six- or seven-yard gain. 46 seconds on the play clock. So, St. Clair runs somebody on, running number two, Mateo, off. So, here. Got to get set on defense. Okay, change of set. Clock will run. Quick pass. And he's down. It looks like he may have fought for the first down. That's a stop the clock again as they reset the chance. Really strong play by the Moon receiver there. We still have 31 seconds left. Moon does have two timeouts left, but they're not getting huge gains here. They still have 39 yards to go. That's and their first timeout there, Gavin. So they're at 31 seconds, have one timeout left. They really have to start looking at taking shots down the field towards the end zone. Your middle of the field starts to disappear. I mean, luckily in high school football, the clock does stop on a first down, so nothing's impossible. But you start to look, when you get down with one timeout, you start to look at taking shots in the end zone soon. Boy, this is, I tell you what, guys, you don't get many better football games in terms of cinema. It's, it's been, it has had a little bit of everything. You know, I'm sure, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot to clean up from the Panthers end, but uh, there's nothing better than cleaning up stuff in a film session after a win versus after a loss, yeah, I'll tell so you what. I will tell you when Coach gave us some film sessions, some of our worst film sessions were after wins. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You have to do that as a coach. I, I mean, we yeah. do the same thing. Yeah. No it's based upon the performance, not the result. <laughs> All right, so here we go, 31 seconds to go. Panthers lead 42-35. Moon driving into Panther territory here. Empty set, four receivers to the left. McGowan's back to throw, he's looking right. Looking to run across the ground. Banbury almost gets him. Great here comes Mortimer job. chasing. Here comes Besselman chasing. Great play by Best. Did he get him in bounds? No. He oh, did yeah. not. Boy, that was close. But that play still took nine seconds and was basically a no gain. Great pursuit from Aiden Besselman. Great, great, great pursuit. Putting that pressure on the quarterback makes it really hard to throw the ball downfield. Even though you didn't get him negative yardage for a sack, 
keeping that constant pressure makes it really hard to throw the ball down the field. Yeah, kudos to the three-man rush from the Panthers. Mortimer and Banbury both got in there and, and were disruptive. And it's tough. You're going three on five, but the Panthers are doing a really good job not giving them all day back there. Yeah, so here we go, 22 seconds now, second down, one timeout left. You got trips to the to the near side and, and, and twins up top. Panthers are going to blitz Jamal Brown. He can't get through. They are going down the field now. It's across the middle. Good coverage by Mateo. In the offensive backfield and downfield. So these might offset unless this is on the defense uh, in the backfield here. Coach, did you see a hold in the backfield? No, I did. I did not see anything back here. I did. So we do have a pass interference on Mateo. That one is clear. So we have we, we have pass interference down the field and then something in the defensive backfield, uh, the offensive backfield. If it is holding, they will offset and they will replay the down, but the time comes off the clock. If they're both on the defense, here we go. So Brandon Co forced to hold. That's great stuff for the Panthers. So there we go. Just as I said, the penalties offset. The time counts, and they'll play the down again from where they just were. So St. Clair got saved by that holding call because that pass interference would have moved the ball downfield 15 yards. And uh, that holding call negated uh, the, the passing. Play. Once again, guys, rushing three or four guys, and they're getting through and forcing holding calls. Kudos. Uh, Brandon Coe did a great job on the bull rush there. So now the, the, the strategy has clearly shifted a bit. 40 yards in 16 seconds. Um, they can't afford to, you know, basically they have one timeout left, but they can't afford to go short of the sticks. Well, they can't go short of the sticks, but they do have a timeout, and the clock stops on a first down. So the whole field is there at their disposal, but they need to get yards, and they need to get them now. So here we go. The crowd, you know, the sparse, socially distanced crowd is on their, on their feet. Oh, here comes Jamal Brown. He's in the backfield. Can he get him? He chases him wide. McGowan's throws. Oh, it's deflected. Nice play. Jamal Brown on the blitz, and Jalen Mortimer deflected it. Great pursuit by the Panthers, and we have third and 11 with nine seconds left. Exactly. Third down. Now you... You, you can do anything still. You have one more shot with that timeout. You really need to get a first down here or take a shot in the end zone because you probably only have two or three shots at most and it's already third down. So you need to get past the sticks here on third and 11. I'll tell you what, uh, as bad as my low scoring game prediction was, coach's prediction of the game being over with six minutes left in a game where everybody was scoring could turn out to be the best call of the night. Except that wouldn't um, call no, this over. Well, yeah, well, yeah. They, they put up a fight here. But that's, yeah, why, that's, why, he's, that's why he's won 400 games and I'm here talking, uh, no, as a no, basketball no. coach, talking about I nothing. Probably, I probably shouldn't have said that because Moon is putting up a pretty good fight. Well, absolutely, they've been I great mean, tonight. They are, they are within striking distance, right? They, they could throw a Hail Mary from here and tie it up. And, and they're, kudos to them to getting here. Um, we talked about they've only had long methodical drives and big special splash plays, whether it's a kickoff return or a fumble return for a touchdown. So moving the ball in this short time. I've got has a been scenario for, for you two guys. Oh, I can't wait. Let's say Moon scores. Would you go for two points or would you want to go to overtime with, against Upper St. Clair? There's zero question I go for two because the way they've run the ball, they can go power and you know, I think they'd be able to get to an after three yards. What is the overtime current setup? Ten, ten yard line, four downs. E yeah. Each Until team. somebody wins? Yeah. I don't know if there's one where they have to go for two at some point. I'm, I don't know. So here's something interesting, guys. You know, in order to throw the ball, for, let's say 45, 50 yards in the air, um, you have to have time. And right now, he's been flushed, even with a you know three or four man rush. Although they've been blitzing yeah. at least one linebacker, um, he hasn't had time to set to throw it that far. No, he hasn't. They've, but they've got up. athletes in there playing. They get the big the big boys are out. Yeah, Dallum's in the game on defense. He has been. Here comes Banbury. He got held. And Mark Banbury's in there. And along with Jalen Mortimer. So they'll use their last time out here. And you'll have one shot now. You need to get to the sticks. And if you get a first down, oh, that's it? No, I don't think so. Well, the St. Clair team coming on the field. Looks like they probably caught a timeout with one or two seconds left. Their quarterback's hobbling, though. So even if they do get another play, it will be tough. The referee's leaving. Game's over. Game that's going to be the ball game. Wow. What a play by what? Mark Banbury, the sophomore guy. He's played both ways. He's played almost every snap, and he just made an unbelievable job there. What an exciting finish. I can tell you, this being the first time I've ever called a game, what a special game to call. Not only sitting between the winningest Whitfield coach of all time, but Gavin, a legend, a legend in the Upper St. Clair community. Ridiculous. You know, we talked earlier, I really don't think there's many people that have had as big an influence across 30 years of classes in Upper St. Clair when not only as somebody in the in the school, but as somebody in their personal lives and their friends. I see you at all their weddings. So, honor to call the game. An unbelievable game to call. St. Clair winning 42 
35, never a game I played in. He, he had more passing yards, I think, tonight than I probably had in my entire three-year career as a starting quarterback. But uh, unbelievable game to watch. That's your fault because you played with a couple of great running backs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you, when you have guys like Sean Lee and Kevin Matthews touching the ball a lot, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to make the yeah, argument no, you no should question. be chucking it. No question. But we had a, we had great teams when I was here. This is another great team, some great special athletes. And glad to see Coach Junko have the team in a chance to make the playoffs and control their own destiny. Huge win for the Panthers uh, as they head into you the final week of the season. think they'll invite us back? I hope they do. Um, it's, it'll be interesting because we're away next week at South Fayette with a chance to be no worse than second in the section. South Fayette won fairly handily over West A tonight, so um, I think they have the same section or conference record than we as we have. And um, and then if we win that game, we have a chance to host, host a first-round playoff game. And if we do, we'll probably be back here um, you know, with, with a broadcast hosting the game. But um, what a night. Outstanding. Kudos to those, to those guys. They were marvelous tonight. They showed a lot of character when the game could have gotten away from them. And I got to give uh, particularly the seniors a lot of credit. Marvelous stuff tonight. Yeah, well, I'm biased. I started out earlier this evening saying that. But, I, you know, I had a part in... Uh, Ethan's career and, and uh, David Pantelis' career, uh, they're marvelous and they're fun to watch. And, and uh, you know, what a combination. You got the, the quickness and the arm of Dahlem and the athleticism of uh, David getting open. So. Yeah. And, of course, the other receivers, that's a pretty good cast. I'm thankful I have everybody you mentioned plus Besselman on the basketball court. Uh, <laughs> you know, they are good at everything they do, and I'm thankful they've chosen to play uh, multiple sports at Upper St. Clair so to our benefit. Besselman plays three sports, you say? He does. So he plays basketball lacrosse. What and else? lacrosse. Lacrosse. He's apparently a marvelous lacrosse player, too, like a, like a huge recruit. So, I mean, it, it's unbelievable to the level of, you know, expectations in terms of time-wise that he's going to do that. But uh, I, I'm glad he is because you'll see him on the heart. Coaches, you know, Coach likes to jab me about basketball, but he's he's at our games all the time, so he's a fan of basketball. So don't don't let him tell you otherwise. Who, who are you talking about? You, you're at our oh, basketball yeah. games. <laughs> I just asked Danny if I'd be able to get in the games. Come in the back, come in the back door like you always do, man. Well, hopefully they'll do some of these live streams so I can follow when I'm back in New York. But it's special to be back here. It's special to see high school football and uh, to see the Panthers win. So uh, it's been a great night, guys. The Panthers. With a 42-35 win over Moon, a special thanks to Josh Helmrich uh, for joining me all the way from New York. It's been amazing having you back. And, of course, Coach Render, it's just been amazing having your insight and your storytelling here. Guys, uh, I really appreciate everything you've contributed to this broadcast and for joining me today. Thank you. You Gavin. do a great job, Gavin. Uh, keep it up. St. Clair's lucky to have you. That's thanks right. a lot, y'all. Have a great evening, and we'll see you back here, hopefully, for a first-round playoff game. Decaf saying you threw for over a thousand yards.